that song, check. Disco tech. Hey, Goose, you know the dance music. How did that song go? Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Let's ooh. all check, or was it disco tech? I can't remember. You, remember, you know the song? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, everybody, it's the Wendy Williams Experience. I saw a show last night because Sundays have become just a vapid black hole to me. I, I, I hate Sunday night TV. I love the Bunny Ranch show on E! with Hugh and the girls. I didn't think that I would like that show, Girls Next Door, but I do. They're not making them fast enough, though. You know what I mean? And so I keep seeing the same ones. And so my heart is still there, but I can't watch because I. it's like being Bobby Brown. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, th- this is the first weekend in weeks that I over being Bobby Brown. Like, I've seen them all. I've analyzed them every which way. And that's not the show's fault. That's my fault, I guess, for having no life or being so into TV. Of which I have a life, but you know, there's certain shows that I like so much, I have to sit and analyze them. I sit all close on the TV and stuff. So, Sunday nights has just become that, you know... I bought clientele anti-age stuff on QVC last night. That's how boring Sunday Night TV was. I got all caught up in the host chat, and then I found myself pulling out my credit card and making that phone call, you know? And I like the clientele products, and it's nice to be able to just order them from QVC, but damn desperate housewives, I need you back. You lost your TV mojo. Yeah, damn you, Bunny Ranch, I need more shows. And MTV, damn you for holding my attention on that stupid little new show that you have with that boy. Now, what's his name? Was I the only one watching the show? The boy, he's a young, fat, white boy. Andy Malnick or something like that. Why? All right. Was that the first time that show has come on? No, it's been on for a couple weeks. It has? Yeah. Why do I like that show? But why do I look at that show and I see the same kind of show that he was trying to do with that white boy? Remember, Kelly Rollins was on his show. You know, the talk show host, unpolished. The, the, the talk show was hosted out of his house, and his parents were part of the studio audience. Public access style. Yes, public access style. This Malinakis, this Andy kid, though, I noticed Kimmel's name is all over the credits. Kimmel's show started off weak on TV and since his gained strength and stuff. So maybe this Andy kid, I don't know. I mean, in a weird kind of way, maybe I just have that kind of humor. I found myself watching the show. Hey, Andy kid, I found myself watching your show. And I watched the first one. I was uh, maybe 10 minutes late, so I watched a full 20 minutes. And then at the top of the hour, I was ready to change the channel and watch something else. But then a second one came on. I found myself watching that. I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I'm getting sucked in to that Andy Malinakis show on, uh, on MTV. Video Music Awards coming up on Sunday. Shout out to Puffy. Got a nice picture of him. And uh, he's explaining why the hell he always wears glasses. You know, I told you I was going to make part of my weekend luxuriation reading my InStyle magazine. Thick as a phone book, you know what I mean? Read it from cover to cover, put it aside, because two weeks from now I'll need to read it again. Everything will be, you know, not fresh in my mind. So... They have a close-up of Puffy in the September in Style magazine. And he answers a question, which we've talked about this before. You know, the eyes are the window to the soul. People who are liars or, you know, deceptors or whatever, they wear sunglasses all the time. Puffy's one of those kinds of people. And I say, the teeth are the window to the coochie. How you take care of your teeth is how do you take care of your privates. And so Puffy is, you know, he wears his glasses all the time. And this is what he says. And I'm so glad you finally talked about this. A person's eyes reveal their truth. That's why I wear shades a lot. I don't share my eyes with everyone. But does that mean you don't tell the truth very much? Or that he's private. Uh, That he's private. Because there's a lot to hide. I don't know. Either way, it's just, you know what? I appreciate. And then the picture that they have is a real close-up shot of him. Just looking at you with no glasses. Just lying to your face. Just a lot. (laughs) Just a lying. (laughs) I ripped it out and brought it into the show. He has his glasses on in his head. Yeah, his glasses are on in his head. <laughs> but you know what? I would like to um, frame this particular picture. And maybe, you know, when we get our new office done, I do want to have a wall of uh, people. Wall of fame. Yeah, well, you know, I don't, not necessarily wall of fame, because also I want a picture of Harmonica Sunbeam. Now, she's not necessarily famous to everybody, but she's one of the premier drag queens in New York City. A wall of fascination, like people who, you know, other people are fascinated by or I'm fascinated by or you're, we can get a wall of feet going. I would like to have um, celebrities' feet and then, or, or feet, and then you take a picture of their feet before they leave the studio and we get everybody's feet on there. You know, I, I like that idea. So we're going to get a whole thing going on and then we'll put the whole thing on the WendyWilliamsExperience.com. Fox 5 Corp. 
Fox 5 called. Phyllis from Fox oh, 5. Phyllis from Fox 5 called. Both they, they are both on vacation. Oh, okay. Oh, and, uh, the girl's married to a white man. I know Stacey Ann Gooden's married to. All right, here in New York, um, the Fox Five News, and I was asking um, a few moments ago if you walked away from your radio. Um, what's up with Mike Woods, the weatherman? Because I haven't seen him. And what's up with Stacey Ann Gooden? And um, so I, you know, made a little funny that Stacey's pregnant by Mike and all like that. But no, I know Stacey's married to a white man. I knew, and I know that um, Mike is single. And I also know that these two are um, staples in our morning activity here. So for Fox to get rid of either one of them, you know, at this particular time would be like not a good move. You know, we can't continually invite strangers into our house like that. And once we warm up to somebody, like we're just warming up to Jody after them moving um, our girl Lynn Brown yeah. to the afternoons. So, um, and then Chris after moving Jim Ryan. So now yeah, Jody and Stacy and Chris and, and Mike, they're family. You know, so please, no moves anytime. Don't break so, up the family. Yeah, don't break up the family. No. And shout out to Phyllis. Hey, Phyllis. This, um, uh, let me say, shout out to M in Philly, who was wondering about a product called Colonex. She went to the website drnature.com and she read an amazing testimonial um, that seems unbelievable. She says, Wendy, I know you're no stranger to colonics, so I was wondering if you had the irrigation colonic or the cleansing. No, I have the, the whole, uh, no, the full, like when you flush a toilet, how nothing's in the toilet afterwards. That's what I get. And I don't know anything about cheating with any cleansers that you... I mean, I know they, they show um, for people who are scared to get the full-blown flush. They, they sell stuff like Colin X and whatnot. You know, if you're going to do it, you got to do the damn thing. But to, much to my chagrin, very few of the people in the audience are familiar or have ever had a colonic. We answered that uh, through the Wendy Williams... Uh, experience poll question. Now here's the new poll question that I asked on Friday and here's the results. Ladies, are you turned off by Martha men? We talked about what that meant, you know. Not necessarily gay, but just really helpful around the house, from the kids to the laundry to the, you know, responsible herb crusted pork chops <laughs> and all that stuff. Art is very defensive. 75% of women say yes, they're turned off by Martha men. Let me get off of you. No, 25% of women say, no, they're not turned off. Now, I don't like your question because you're trying to turn it around and it doesn't yeah. work the same way. Why not? We'll talk about uh, this in the next break. <laughs> Goose has given me the countdown. Um, advice hours coming up next hour. Feel free to get on the phones and, and we'll talk. I talking to this young lady. She called me at home and I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So, what should I tell her? Just it, tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams experience. everybody it's the wendy williams experience and of course um we are doing we're in a vice hour but as soon as vice hour is over it's the hour of truth and we're going to blow through a whole bunch of gossip including the bobby brown stabbing situation and don ho is in the hospital so we'll talk about that as well as many other things uh this hour um i've still got the caloric content of some of your favorite drinks um, it'll just save you a few calories, you know, when the weekend comes. That's all. <clears throat> In the meantime, people are on the phone waiting to talk. Hello. Hello, Wendy. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Wendy? I'm doing well. How are you? All right. I have a question for you. Okay. All right. I'm about to go in my dirty at college. Mm -hmm. And my personality is I'm not really, just like you say sometimes, you're not interested in making friends with people. Right. <laughs> you're just comfortable in your own space. Yeah. All right. Um, I met these kids that were from Brooklyn where we go to school upstate and they were cool and everything. Uh, co uh, co um, along the course of the year, some he said, she said stuff went off. You know how that foolishness goes. And mm -hmm. I'm not really into that because I'm a very blunt person. Right. All right. Everyone stopped speaking. But you come to realize things are really pointless and dumb. So I'm, my question to you is when, it, when I go back to school and I see them, do you think it would make sense for me to go up to them and approach them on some, you know, forget everything or just leave it alone? Because, again, I'm not the type of person that wants friends. And if I do that, it might seem like I'm begging for their friendship. You know what I mean? True. Uh, you're, you're speaking to the choir right now. Okay. <laughs> I need to know the nature of what the he said, she said was about. Go ahead. All right. 
over a bunch of girls and people telling somebody what some, another girl said about another girl, and we all boys, you know what I mean? And they must have went to a one girl and said that I said I go to back to this other girl and spread news, which is not true, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, that's girly, first of all, for them to be going back and forth to another girl telling lies, you know what I mean? So an altercation occurred. It was nothing serious, and then everyone just stopped speaking, you know what I mean? I mean, are these people really germane to your mental health there at college, or can you go on and make other friends? Not at all. All right. Well, you know what? I mean, you sound a lot like me, and 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 you like like people love them or leave them. You yeah. could take you could take them or leave them. You're more satisfied with yourself. I would go on and make new acquaintances. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're talking about a physical altercation, now that's a little that's a little much. <laughs> Even though you said it was no big th deal, nope. Yeah. Mm -mm. I wouldn't go back to them. Yeah, that's true, too. All right, take care. All right, Wendy. Bye-bye. I mean, you know, we're not starved for friends, me and him. Hello? Wendy? Hey. Oh, my God. Wendy, I haven't talked to you in years. How you doing, girl? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Listen, I just called to check in because you were singing that song. Yeah. It's Let's, Let's all, all chant. chant. Yep. I, I found out, but this is advice <laughs> hour, so I got to go, okay? All right, Wendy. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Advice Hour. All right, uh, Wendy, now I just got a question, Wendy. Okay. Uh, remember you was reading green out the list with the Coca-Cola? Yes. Is that true? Yes, sir. I wasn't making it up. Oh, okay. No, I just wanted to know that. I just thought that was, you know. Disgusting. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I ain't going to mess up your, no. My flow? Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a true list. And tell them straight dudes do listen to your show, right? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for calling. That's what's up. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, if I found that list of all the things that Coca-Cola does, um, I would have uh, read it to you today, but I did it on Friday. You might not have been here for it. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Me and my girlfriends keep going back and forward. Okay. If a man lets you finger him in the behind mm -hmm. is that gay tendencies or what and then throws his legs up in the sky oh well that that is something to be concerned with i mean they keep saying something my girlfriend keeps saying no 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 you know that's just freaky i'm like nah well, here's, that's gay tendencies here's the thing are you going to the first knuckle second number <laughs> knuckle or the full finger <laughs> let me uh we're going to the second knuckle yeah, th that that would be a little gay. Here, let me call in an expert. Hold on a moment. Come here. <laughs> Hold on. I'm calling in my expert. I'll answer you on the air, okay? Okay. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. We'll Bye -bye. go to another caller. Uh, but hello? Hey. Hi. Wait, before I speak to you, Arthur, yeah. second knuckle, is that gay? Second knuckle. Uh, it's teetering on the edge. Okay, teetering on the edge. Case closed. Hello, sir. Hey, what's going on, Wendy? Oh, good. How are you? Pretty good. Good. So what's what's uh, the problem today? I've been in a 20-year relationship. I'm bisexual. Okay. And since college, me and this guy's been double dating girls. And he would he got off watching me make out with girls. So he would strip. He's a stripper. Uh-huh. And he would strip at female places and bring girls over to get off watching me make love to them. And then we would have threesomes. And the girls would think that, that he's all into them, but there in actuality, they're into, he's into you. There you go. So 20 years of doing this, we're in a 20-year relationship. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Do you, do you love each other? He has children. Wait, he has children. And the girl, his, the mother of his two kids, her fantasy was to see two men make love. Okay, wait a minute. What do you mean you have children? Who has, he has children. You've adopted children? No, 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 no. He has children. Oh, he has children. Right. Okay. From the 20 years of us being together, he has children. Okay. Not through me, through of another woman. Mm -hmm. But her fantasy was to see two men make love. Okay. And he showed that side to her. Okay. And, but he's frightened to walk down the street with me. And I'm having issues with that. We don't go out. It's strictly we're on the phone four or five times a day. And when we get together, the sex is off the hook. But he has an issues with dealing with who he is as a person. Well, you have issues also because would you walk down the street with him holding hands, knowing that you're playing both sides of the fence, men and women? I'm comfortable with myself. So when people ask me, what am I? I'll tell them oh. I'm bisexual. Oh, okay. I well, have no shame in my game. I know who I am. Did you know all along that he was bisexual, but that he wanted to portray a heterosexual lifestyle? 
No, because we started since college. Since college, yeah. Well, we I mean... double date girls in college. Now I'm at a point where I'm... You're so comfortable, but he still wants to play... I'm gay. The hidden game. Right. So what's your question to me? I don't know what to do at this point. There's a lot... Relationship okay. has expired. It's expired? Yeah. So you think I should move on? Yeah. Because he, he, he's he's not going to come... What is he in corporate world? No. He, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. He's not going to come out of the closet. Um, for I don't want him to. But he's not going to walk down the street with you? Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. I mean, he's only bisexual with you, apparently, in the in the dark. But you are bisexual, and you, you don't mind that the whole world knows. The relationship has run its course. You want more, or at least more acknowledgement, and he's not willing to give it. Right. It, it happens. You guys have been together longer than most people, gay or hetero. Right. That's and, true. and I understand what you're saying about the sex being off the hook, but it sounds to me like you're, you'd only be hurting yourself Put that if where? you continue. Back there. But what, another thing I don't understand about being bisexual is that a lot of gay people who write books, they really don't break down what it's like to be gay or bisexual because there are different levels of it. Women, straight people, see it as the man penetrates the woman. But there's many levels of the gay life, and someone needs to talk about that. Let me ask you a question. If a woman uses her digits and goes up to the first knuckle on a man, is that gay, freaky, or you're not sure? Well, that's how you find out if your man likes it or not. That's the one. That's a test. Okay, but the first, the first knuckle is the panic button. So that's not, in my opinion, like gay or straight. That that's just there. But that second knuckle is that <laughs> is that where the freak gets entered? It depends. I mean, it, it, there's different ways. There are some men that like watching other men's penis. There are other people who like to fill a man's ass. It depends. That's what bottoms and tops are, and they're versatile. Okay, well, let me uh, let's conclude your particular situation um, by saying it sounds like the relationship has run its course. Twenty minutes you've been with this guy, he clearly wants the world to see him as a heterosexual, regardless of what he is to you. You right. understand? I got it. And and you're just going to continually get hurt by this. It's going to make you lose your mind. True. So I would just you know move on. No more sex. Formally end it. Put and that that's where? that. Back you there. got it. It happens. Okay. Yeah, okay. Life goes on. Like, okay, bye-bye. Enjoy. All right. All right, now, I got this article from Glamour Magazine. It's the calorie content of... Boy, there's like five drinks on here that I love. And I thought that maybe there's some on here that, like, don't you love a mudslide? Don't you think of that as the most fattening drink in the world? Like 300 calories easily per mudslide? Mudslide is, a, is 154 calories. I don't mind that. I mean, who knew? And mojitos taste sinful, like another three or 400 calorie drink, 206 calories. Now I got to tell you something. I'm not sure of the ounces, but everything that I'm looking at is served in the traditional mojito glasses, tall mudslide is, you know, like that. An apple martini, 91 calories. Why was I thinking that's a 200 calorie drink and I'm ordering white damn wine? Recently, you've heard me talk about liking white wine because sometimes there's no champagne around. Somebody will come around with some wine and I don't want it. But I started drinking wine because it's only like 90 calories a glass. But an apple martini is 91. I'm going back to apple martinis. Wine, you can put that where? Way back there. <laughs> Cosmo, though, is 251 calories. Jeez, in a Cosmo glass with the cranberry. Cranberry juice is fattening as hell, though. Cranberry juice and citrus vodka and stuff. A white Russian is considerably more calories than a mudslide. That's what I was thinking of. The mudslide is 154. A white Russian is 338 calories. A Long Island iced tea, 323 calories. Tequila sunrise, 114 calories. Margarita. 338 calories? Gin and tonic, 105 calories. I would have thought that would be less. Tom Collins, who drinks that? <laughs> Your old aunt, Betsy, I know. 208 calories. Goose, you drink Tom Collins? No. 208 calories for that. Gosh, the best drink on here I thought was the most caloric because I enjoyed the most. A sour apple martini, 91 calories. 91 calories. I love that. Who knew? Hey, you guys, I found that list, what that guy was asking about, what Coke does and what water does. 
I'll let you know in the next break. Keep it here. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together. We were at his house. And why do you think his thing wouldn't work? You think maybe he's... How you doing? The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> oh, yes. Shout out to everybody working hard in Harlem. 125th Street, 135th Street. Oh, I like that. Thanks for turning us on. Special shout out to LB Graphics on 56th Street in New York City. That's a, like the best fly- flyer place around. I see you all's name on a lot of um, the hot parties in the city. LB Graphics. Do you ever read a flyer like that? See, I do that when I'm someplace and I want to avoid contact. With, you know, like you're in a party. <laughs> and you well, you read it all. You read the flyer from cover to cover because, you know, you're trying to snap your neck to the music. And you're not trying to get in conversation. So you're so glad that the flyers are all spread around on the table because the flyers then become your best friend. The flyers and your drink. <laughs> and... <clears throat> And then you, all of a sudden you start playing with your telephone like you're up to something real important. But in actuality, I'm pulling up Miss Pac-Man on my phone. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm sitting in the party. I got, you know, my mar- mojito in one hand and I got a bunch of flyers in the other hand. And I'm trying so hard to just keep reading the flyers so I don't have to make eye contact or get into a conversation that maybe I don't want to get into. Yeah. So then you read everything right down to who made the flyer. <laughs> and if you look at parties... You'll notice that, like, the majority of the hot parties, the flyers are made by LB Graphics. So shout out to you all. I was doing some avoiding over the weekend. I happened to be looking down at the flyers with a drink in one hand, a stack of flyers in the other. I saw you all's name on the back. So thank God for these people making these flyers. Yes. Hey, Pam, what's happening? Pam's giving us her Harlem Week report. She says, I went to Harlem Week on Saturday. Ray J performed live. Three past hits and his new single, which I like. He performed once, was nice, uh, something voice better. Shout out to Ray J. Pam is very critical. Pam, am I reading this right? You're giving Ray J the thumbs up? Well, okay then. (laughs) Go Ray J. And she says, don't Bobby and Whitney love each other? They are truly soulmates. That's exactly. Exactly. And she says, I hope I find my soulmate real soon. I know. There, Pam, I wish you luck with the soulmate thing. They'll be together forever. Mm-hmm. Here's Raven. Ow! Weighing in from Nork. He says, mother. A mother. He says, mother, take it from the expert about the finger and the booty. Hell yeah, he's gay. All right. And he throws his legs in the air, too. Oh, Art, I forgot to tell you that part. Yeah. Yeah. He throws, he throws his legs in the air. Oh, he's enjoying it. Yes, to receive, the, like, the second knuckle. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah huh? Uh, and Raven said, and he's on the down low, and he's definitely a bottom. Oh. Thank you, Raven. All right. <clears throat> Woo! What do we got going on over here? Oh, I see a prize sheet. WBLS, we got tickets to the New York Liberty. How you doing? <laughs> As they take on the Charlotte Sting. Ooh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this Thursday, August 25th at Madison Square Garden. Art, I want you to go to this game. I go to the games. Oh, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's the audience like at a Liberty game? It's It's... Complete. How you doing? Wall to wall. Wow. Females. Shout out to all the women who've ever thought of walking on the wild side of life. Not to say being a lesbian is wild side, but if try, shout out to the women who want to try something new, if you know what I'm saying. And you just don't have the guts to maybe go to a lesbian-based uh, club or a lesbian party. Do something like go to a Liberty game. Yes. How you doing? The ball players be hollering at the girls on the stand. Yup. Yep. Shout out to Tyra Banks. Oh. All right. <laughs> you too, Latifah. I see y'all. <laughs> um, but yeah, mm-hmm. if you've ever thought about it, but you don't know where to go, and you don't just want to walk up to a pretty girl at like a club that is not necessarily a lesbianic club, go to a Liberty. As a matter of fact, I want, I want, um, one of you want to try it out, girls, to win these tickets. There you go. All right. So it has to be the tenth person on the phone who wants to try it out. Mm. Can you do that? Yeah. No, that's discrimination. 
Because if a man wins the tickets, all right, 10th caller on the phone, though, wins the tickets. For the Try It Out girls, for the Curious girls, um, just go over to Madison Square Garden on Thursday. About what time do they do they need to get there to get a good... Depends when the game starts, either 7 or 12 noon on the weekends. All right, well, this is a Thursday, so this would be like 7 in the evening? 7 in the evening, yeah. So I would say then get there by 6 o'clock to get a good perch. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And guys get there, too, as every man's lesbian fantasy. See, that's what I don't... <laughs> All right, well, look. Um, Isha's here, and she's going to get the telephone. And um, the caller number 10. What did I say? Call 10 or 11? 10. All right, we'll stick with that. Caller number 10, Thursday, um, August 25th. This coming Thursday, the Liberty Take on the Charlotte Sting. <laughs> 10 for each knuckle, honey. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, I, I um, dial carefully and good luck. It's 866-GET-WENDY. And, by the way, how you doing in advance? There you go. Shout out to the Bronx. Saturday, August 27th. I'm so glad the summer's almost over. Bob Lee's going to be in the Bronx from noon to 5 p.m. for Affinity Back to School Jam. You know, Affinity is, the, is you know, health care. And they're doing a little back to school jam on 161st Street between Grand Concourse and Walton Avenue in the Bronx on Saturday from noon to 5 p.m. All right. This is big. It's the back to school jam. So um, celebrate back to school with Bob Lee this coming Saturday in the Bronx with the people of Fresh. Quickly go to ghettoporns.com. Ghetto who? Ghettoporns.com. D Nice in New Jersey says. Wendy, anyone can watch the Superhead tape at ghettoporns.com. Just click an icon and you're in. Okay. Do we have to pay? No, I'm going to go over there because this one is broke down. Okay. I'm going to give you a that porn's with a Z? Yeah, with the, how did you know? I can start from resistance. Yeah, Ebonics. Ghetto porn stars. Okay, porn, so porn stars with a Z. Okay. Get old porn stars with a Z. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, we're going to keep it moving. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. 107.5 WBLS. It's Wendy with the throwback from way back. The Wendy Williams Experience. The Wendy Williams Experience. Vivica Fox just celebrated her 41st birthday. She bought herself a very nice gift. She treated herself to a five and a half carat Hello Kitty necklace from Van Cleef and Arpel, showing that she's still a girl, even at 41, but a rich girl, which is why she got it in diamonds. I love it. And this is what she says about her birthday gift to herself. A working girl can buy a great birthday present. I'm single, but I'm going to get all the presents my man should have gotten me. I still can't figure out how she is, how it is that she married that queen 6'9". And none of her so-called girlfriends pulled her tail. You know, like if you're going to go the Liza route, at least, you know, if get somebody more, you know, don't get somebody so queen-esque. Did you remember when 6 9 dyed, dyed his hair blonde? Ugh. At this point, I'm just like, Vivica, I know in my mind. Of course, I know her much better now because, um, you know, she's been more out since that 50 Cent thing. So we've all, I think, learned a lot more about Vivica Fox since then. But knowing the woman that we know now, could you picture that woman married doing the doing the Liza Minnelli thing? Hello? Pickens are slim in Hollywood. Uh, she's Vivica Fox, not Star Jones. Oh. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? Right. And I'm not even talking about looks. I'm just talking about in Vivica's quicker to tell you you can put that player back there. Star says that she's a you know, you know, you think might think that Star Jones is a hip shaking mama who will tell you about yourself and stuff. <clears throat> I don't believe she does that when it comes to men. Case in point. She takes what she can get. That, <laughs> oh. Hello. <laughs> But Vivica, I can picture Vivica telling you, you, and you, hell no. I'm Fox. First name Vivica. Read the upper arm. <laughs> you know, she's got that Fox etched in her arm. Like, I don't just, I don't see her having it from men. But? But? She's soft and pink. And at the end of the day, 6'9", 
swept her off her feet. How you doing? All right. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, water first. I did this on Friday, but I did it later in the show, so you might have missed it. <clears throat> oh, hell, I did it during the bonus hour. <laughs> Most of you don't get that. Sorry. <laughs> 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. This is advice hour, so I thought I'd pass this stuff along to you. 37% of Americans, well, the thirst mechanism is so weak that it's often mistaken for hunger. Even a mild dehydration can slow down a person's metabolism by as much as 3%. <clears throat> One glass of water will shut down midnight hunger pangs for almost 100% of dieters according to the University of Washington study. Lack of water is the number one trigger for daytime fatigue. So when you're feeling tired, mm -hmm. uh, preliminary research indicates that eight to 10 glasses of water a day could significantly ease back joint pains, excuse me, ease back pains, joint pains, and whatnot for up to 80% of back and joint sufferers. Are you gagging? A mere two drops of a body water can trigger, wait, a mere, excuse me, a mere 2% drop of body water can trigger fuzzy short-term memory. I can believe that, but this, I'm like gagging. <clears throat> Drinking five glasses of water daily decreases the risk of colon cancer by 45%. Plus, it slashes the risk of breast cancer by 79%. And... <clears throat> One is 50% less likely to develop bladder cancer. This is all with just five glasses of water a day. Hold on. I'm taking care of my health. Damn. Pour your water. I didn't say drown. Is that a, is that a 40? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Now let's move on to Coke. Are you ready for this? In many states here in the United States, the highway patrol cops carry two gallons of Coke in their in their, you know, vehicles to remove blood stains from the highway after car accidents. Imagine how it's tearing down your teeth. Okay, walk with me. You can, this is supposed to be my weekend project. I forgot to do it. You can put a T bone steak in a bowl of Coke, keep it there for two days, come back, the steak is gone. Oh, wow. That's, ooh, exactly. So imagine what it's doing to your teeth. You better brush. <laughs> to clean your toilet, pour a can of Coke into the toilet bowl and let it sit for one hour, then flush. The citric acid in Coke removes all the stains. Mm. To, remo to remove rust spots from chrome bumpers on your car, rub the bumper with a rumpled piece of Reynolds wrap, aluminum foil, dipped in Coke. Dang. To clean corrosion from a car battery terminal, pour a can of Coke over the terminal. The bubbles will clean away the corrosion. Mm. To loosen rusty bolts, apply a cloth soaked in Coca-Cola to the rust and leave it there for several minutes. Come back and you take it off with no problem. To bake a moist ham, I use ginger ale, but it says empty a can of Coke into the baking pan. Are you sure when you come back the ham will even be there? Oh. Damn! <laughs> and you pour it over your ham. To remove grease from your clothing, empty a can of Coke into a load of greasy clothes and detergent and run it through the cycle. The Coke will loosen up the grease stains. Oh, it also clean road haze from your windshield. Wow. Oh, to carry Coca-Cola syrup, the concentrate, the truck, the commercial truck must have, must use the hazardous material <gasps> card placed Oh, the, the, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. The distributors of Coke have been using it to clean the engines of their trucks for about 20 years. No. Ooh. The active ingredient in Coke is phosphoric acid. No. Ooh. It will dissolve a nail in four days. We got to get some of these experiments going on. Yeah. 
is somebody bringing a T-bone steak tomorrow? And I'll bring in um, uh, some nails. How about you bring in some That's the cheaper there. item. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Apparently, we can get the coat from the cops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, what I'm saying is please don't forget to brush your teeth. Gross. All right, keep it where you got it. It's the Wendy Williams experience, and we're moving in to the hour of truth coming up next. Thanks. Wendy, man. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. Don't ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams experience. I just finished having my lunch. Almost dinner time. Um, would you like to know what I had? Chicken tenderloin in orange glaze with rice and vegetables. Otherwise known as chicken la ronge. A lean cuisine, damn you. 1.5 grams in fat and 230 calories. You got to do it. Do you ever notice that when I eat, I wolf everything down? Yes. Particularly when it comes to the lean cuisines, I might as well just turn the tray up to my mouth, right? <laughs> I don't break eye contact with my food, nothing. I really concentrate. And I know what I do, but it is what it is. The reason that I do that with lean cuisines, you ever get food that tastes really good when it's hot, but the second you eat it as a leftover or cold, it's like, what the hell is this crap I'm eating? <laughs> Well, this would be one of those things. Lean cuisine, any of the entrees. Like, they're delicious when they're hot and they're fresh and, the, you know, wafting. The second, like, by the time I finish doing this talk break, I don't want the rest of this. So when Goose says to me, we got two minutes left, oh, I'm going to shovel in, I'm going to eat, in, and I'm trying to, you know. So Puffy says he's not drinking Ch um, Cristal anymore. He's, yeah, he's, he said not just Cristal, but he says that he's moving away, kind of, sort of, from champagne. Here's his quote. You know, in light of the MTV Video Music Awards coming up, you kind of want to know how the host is going to be celebrating. And here's what he says. He says, I don't drink Cristal anymore. I haven't indulged in four years. I like authentic, smooth Russian vodka and quality tequila. I'm trying to learn about fine wines. As you get a little more mature, you realize that the wine game is very sexy. The wine experience is definitely one of the sexiest experiences going. Now, as you know, he's um, also enjoying wearing white clothes recently. And if you don't recognize that, you're not alone, me neither. But he's addressing the whole white thing. Here's what he says. Oh, it's going to be a white carpet at, at um, MTV and, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. He's probably going to have one of those white parties also. He says, white represents purity to me. It's God's color. <laughs> I'm showing my belief in God. Whenever I watch cowboys and Indian movies, I always thought the white cowboy in the excuse me, the cowboy in white looked better than the one in black. I don't like this. This is all touching a little wow. bit too close to the whole black white yeah. people thing. I don't like. Mm -mm, I'm not. Mm -mm. And it, it, it's it's too bad we can't talk like that. But in my mind, while I was doing that, weren't you just going into the yeah. the black versus yeah. white? Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm not. Mm -mm. You can put that player over there. <laughs> He's just releasing that statement about Cristal because Jay-Z said while you were popping Cristal in the jacuzzi, I was uh, popping Cristal on the, on the yacht or whatever the hell. You know, Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying yeah. during the song. Oh, Puffy. Such a girl. <laughs> Nicole is listening. Nicole says, Wendy, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the pregnant woman who was missing in Philly was found in her body and her boyfriend was arrested. Exactly. But you want to know what? If you are, if you don't really watch the news, depending on what channel, you wouldn't know because they don't. The news did not do justice to the black girl, the pregnant woman in Philly who was missing. She's been missing since July 18th. They were suspecting the boyfriend all along. We spoke to Golden Girl, you know, um, who works at my radio station in Philly, Power 99. We spoke to her on the phone regarding the missing woman and whatnot. So they found the woman's body. I never got a handle on exactly where they found it because it was, I saw one quick news blurb over the weekend. That's it. 
But with all these other people around the country who are missing and found in marshes and whatnot, they give a whole lot of, um, you know, airtime. If somebody in Philly can get at me, let me know. Where did they find her body? Let me guess, a marshy swamp? Where did they find her body? And that's good. The boyfriend was arrested. Has he been charged? Good. And shout out to the family. I'm sorry to hear. Yeah, she was uh, found. The body was found. She, she was dead. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Franco, the skinny white boy. He loves to sign off that way. Love you, Wendy. Franco, skinny white boy. So he says, hey, Wendy, I'm suffering from a two liter a day coke habit. And I heard those rumors, but it's bull. He says, none of them were true. However, I, I've ne- he says, none of them are true. However, I've never tried cleaning a car or clothing with Coca-Cola. I gave up all drinks with high fructose corn syrup in June. That's the killer. Mm. That's the killer as far as calories. Oh, yeah. Turn it up. Turn it up. What? Oh, I thought that was you at first. <laughs> yeah. What? This song, when it was popular, it used to come on the radio. I'm in the car with my mother and father going someplace and listening to the music and everything. The next thing you know, she's, ah, ah. Much like some of you cherubs when you listen to Miss Wendy's show and you're in the car with your mother driving you from camp or school or whatever, and then Miss Wendy does something all inappropriate, and you're damning me. Oh, I know what that's like. <laughs> this song used to be out, and my mother and I would be driving to the mall, and we're both, you know, snapping our necks and having nice conversation. Next thing you know, and I'm like, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, how embarrassing. <laughs> Number one at the box office this weekend, a 40-year-old virgin who went to see it, it made $20 million. <laughs> it made $20 million. You okay? You okay? Yeah, yeah. That was my own funky spunk. It was rice. It fell from between my teeth onto the microphone. When I plucked it, it went up oh. my nose. <laughs> Uh, well, I might as well not waste a good kernel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and then Red Eye is number two at the box office. Four Brothers, number three, still holding steady in the top five. Good. <clears throat> blah, 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 and so on and for so forth. <clears throat> and this is from Miami Beach, Miami. Oh, okay. Well, the... <laughs> this just in. Okay, here you go. The lights outside Shaquille O'Neal's home on Star Island shine bright. Too bright for the neighbors across Biscayne Bay. For weeks, O'Neal's neighbors have been asking him to dim the floodlights surrounding his house. It looks like a train coming through a tunnel, and I'm staring at these lights, said Alan Toto, one of the neighbors. My problem is I've got this beautiful condo with a great view, and I've lost my view thanks to Shaquille O'Neal, says Kim Surath. It feels like I'm living across from a baseball stadium, and it, that's not what I paid for. I paid a lot of money for this property. I got a spotlight myself, myself, and I shine it on him. Excuse me. This is what she did. She fired, fought fire with fire. She says, I got a spotlight myself, and I shined it on him last night. And today, knocking on my door was code enforcement from the city of Miami, city of Miami Beach, threatening to cite me and that I would be fined $5,000 if I did it again. So when the news people from NBC showed up at Shaq's house, here's what his quote was. Get away from my house. What do you want? He says through the intercom on the gate way down the driveway. Of course I've been told. If they don't like it, tell them to pull their shades. Oh, no, Shaq, you should have done a Vivica. If they don't like it. Back there. Okay. And so this is what one of the neighboring people says. I'm going to buy the same lights that Shaq has. And since they're in code, I have no problem. I'm going to put them on my balcony and we're going to make Star Island light up. That's what one of the neighbors says. So apparently it's some sort of thing going on with the with the floodlights. I wouldn't think that Shaq would want his house on on blast like that, but it's probably a beautiful property, Mm -hmm. you know. And the wealthy people who are being bothered are not impressed by the celebrity. They just don't want, you know, all that residual lighting on blast on their properties. Can, do we have time to talk about the Bobby Brown stabbing? Yeah. Okay. 
A man has been indicted on charges of stabbing singer Bobby Brown's nephew. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me? It's still a stabbing? It's still a man. It's true. During a fight at Justin's restaurant. Now, you remember when this happened. I talked about it on the show, except the nephew in question's name is uh, Mark Dixon. Is that the nephew who looked into the camera at, at the other night when he came into Whitney and Bobby's house? You know, little fly, honey. He looked about 27. Didn't he look about 27? And old high Whitney was like, nephew! Nephew! <laughs> Remember? And then she started wiling out. And answer the phone, Goose, because that might be somebody from Nippy Inc. giving us a little handle. Is that is that this nephew? He had on the baseball hat. And then after he was there for about three minutes, then he was looking like, damn, why did I walk into this? All I wanted to do was come over here to Auntie and Aunt's uncle's house just to get my little shine on. And, and she all out of sorts. Remember, Whitney was carrying on. Yes. Born to be. Wow. <laughs> Who got Nobody hears you. The person who got stabbed uh, was was uh, Whitney's nephew. Yes. Right. Not uh, not Bobby's nephew. So it wasn't the one in the um, the one who got stabbed is not the one who. Uh, no. Well, this right here saw. says Bobby's nephew. So the one that we saw on the show was Whitney's nephew. That's right. Yeah. See, I'm not going for technicalities because I'm assuming like like my nephew Travis. I've heard my husband refer to him as, you know, his nephew, too. Right. You know, like, it, like it's all in the same mix. Right. I, I mean, I don't know. Then again, we don't have a, a big family. All right. Well, anyway, this boy's name is Marcus Dixon. He's 27. And, excuse me, the stabber's name is Marcus Dixon. <clears throat> oh, let me start from the beginning. Get go. the music out. Help me. A man has been indicted on charges of stabbing singer Bobby Brown's nephew during a fight at a restaurant, Justin's in New York. Yeah. Marcus Dixon was indicted Friday on one count of aggravated assault and two counts of aggravated battery, um, according to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. The incident occurred May 23rd as Brown and others were celebrating his father's birthday. Oh, Pops. Mm. It wasn't Father's Day. It was his father's birthday. Police said witnesses, witnesses told police that as guests were leaving, someone bumped into someone else causing a fight. Two men in Brown's entourage were stabbed in the neck oh. during the fight. The man, Marcus Dixon, is not a nephew. He's the stabber. Dixon is accused of stabbing one of them, Brown's nephew. The stabbing happened at Justin's Restaurant and Bar, owned by Puffy. Brown was not involved in the fight. Dixon is currently free on $50,000 bond, Brown lives in Alpharetta with his wife, Whitney. So it didn't give the name of the nephew. And um, and that was Justin's Atlanta. Imagine you're out celebrating your father's birthday and somebody bumps you and all that goes down. My song is tenderoni! My song is tenderoni! <laughs> if I take you Back to the room. Mm. Right? Yes. Remember remember on the on the show around the campfire? Yep. Take off your clothes. Mm. Stop fighting, Pop. <laughs> all them beans, all them beans, you stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> all them beans. Let's go out in our blow up yacht. I'm rolling my ass off. I'm rolling my ass off. What you want to do? Oh. I, let's go jack this fool for his boat. Let's go jack this fool for his boat. What? I don't drive no more. We spend more money than you could possibly. Fire. We need some new episodes, don't we? Don't we need some new episodes? It's a shame. When you start knowing the dialogue, it's time for new episodes. Being that damn Bobby Brown. Growing up, God, he's gonna, that's going to take a little bit of attention off just because I like that. I like that show. It comes on tonight on a and &E. I'm going to be watching. And now that I just had a 230-calorie lunch, I can really afford to zhuzh up the snackage during the Gotti show tonight because that's, you know. 
<laughs> all right, you all, keep it here. More chat to go. Gwen Stefani, Halle Berry, Lindsay Lohan, uh, most deaf too. And uh, Mariah, we're not finished with you. Keep it here. It's windy, man. My boyfriend and I have been dating for like about four months now. And first time we had sex, he could not get it off at all. Maybe it's drinking. Is he a drug user? Does he take any depressants or anything? No, nothing. Maybe it's for you to the Wendy Williams experience. 107.5 WBLS. All right, everybody. Don't forget, Vaughn Harper's up at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm. From- what are you doing? Vaughn <laughs> 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 um, Harper's coming up at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm. Um, and then, of course, it's champagne taking us right through to the morning show here at WBLS. In the meantime, it's the Wendy Williams experience at 26 minutes after 4 o'clock on a beautiful day as we wind down summer here in New York. I know we've got weeks to go. Shout out to everybody on the Jersey Shore. Do you know that on Saturday, the annual Caribbean Beach Party is happening in Asbury Park, directly across from Convention Hall and the Paramount Theater? Yeah, this is big. Shout out to all my homies in the 07712. So the BLS Street team's going to be there. It's going down on Saturday on the Jersey Shore, this coming Saturday. I'll repeat the information. Then, of course, you can always go to our website to find out more. We're WBLS.com. At the Asbury Park Beach, you can join the WBLS street, uh, street team about 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Now, this is going to be an all-day event. It's the annual Caribbean Beach Party at Asbury Park Beach, directly across from Convention Hall, the Paramount Theater. That's where I graduated from high school. Okay. And had a summer job on the on the boardwalk right next to Madame Marie's palm reading. The old woman who owned it purposely told me to watch all the black people when they came in because we steal. I was like, what? You know, and at the time I didn't have a voice. You know what I mean? So, you know, I I I would let it go down. I'd be like, I'll watch. All right. I'll watch them take. You know what I'm saying? And then one day I will I will have a, a voice and I'm I will tell. But by now we we all know that, right, right, folk? Whenever we go into a store. And it wouldn't happen a lot, but every once in a while, you know, they'd come in and be all sloppy with the stealing and whatnot. And I would act like I didn't see, but I saw. But because she warned me, because she tipped me off to it, I was like, I'm not gonna help you. Yeah. Because she probably had the white employees watching me. Uh, Anyway. I say all that to say uh, Caribbean Massive. Saturday at 1 p.m. The Asbury Park Beach. All that stuff is closed down though. now. The the Palm Reader and a lot of that stuff. But there's still a few vendors. You know, you can get something to drink and whatnot. And and it's going to be fun on Saturday. The annual Caribbean Beach Party at Asbury Park Beach on Saturday. Raven, why do you end everything with all Roy? I just think it's so funny. Here's what Raven says. When, W-E-N, I love the familiarity. When, just so you know, Fort Monmouth has a 50-50 chance of staying open. Fox News reports, all Roy, and then he signs off Raven. Where's the all Roy in that? He's just so funny. (laughs) Just so funny, Raven. All (laughs) Roy. Um, All right, so we're going to... Oh, this is L.A. Weight Loss, right? Oh, well, excuse me. So far today, I've consumed about about 500 calories. 230 was my L'Orange, which is part of L.A. Weight Loss. And then I did have a box of dots, Mm. which is, I think, another maybe 250 calories. What's your limit? I like to go for between 1,000 and 1,500 calories a day. You know what I mean? Because that way I can be assured of... um, that, that's my own crazy nuttiness. That's not how I was on L.A. Weight Loss. On L.A. Weight Loss, it was a whole different story. But I'm not on L.A. Weight Loss anymore. I'm just trying to not unravel everything that has been, um, that, that they've introduced to me. Like, I'll go home tonight, and I won't lie, while I'm watching Growing Up Gotties, I'm going to have steamed Brussels sprouts with um, lemon pepper on them and no hollandaise sauce or anything like that. You know, and for the sweet, I'll have another one of my 100-calorie, you know, Nabisco snacks that they sell in the stores now. You know, and water mm. with little crystal light in it, like I have right here. So, oh, that's a yeah, it's a little cris- crystal light yeah. in the water, just to give it a little flavor. I mean, I'll be under a thousand calories today. You know, because I I already picked out the Brussels sprouts. I'm the only one in my house that likes them, and I handpicked six of them. 
just for my snack tonight, growing up Gotties. I love uh, Brussels sprouts. Drizzling the butter or olive oil. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Steam them <laughs> and put lemon pepper on them. Oh. Yes. Butter, olive oil, that puts like another few calories on it. You know, you got to learn. Like, I, you can use butter buds on LA weight loss. You know, they teach you. They teach you what it is that you'll need to lose your weight and then keep it off. You've got a one on one weight loss counselor. That's somebody that you can call all the time. <clears throat> To ask anything that you want to ask. And each case is an individual situation with LA weight loss. Like for me, I'm a carb lover. So my my diet, my weight loss was catered to me as a carb lover. And I lost 15 pounds. It took me about three months. Actually, I lost like 17 pounds. It took me like three months and I've kept it off. It's been about a year and, and three months, a year and two months. And I've kept it off. And, and it's a wonderful weight loss program. It's affordable. There are hundreds of locations all around the country. I am positive that there is one either near your house or your job. Go in, find out about it. But before you bother going in, why don't you call and find out about L.A. Weight Loss? Find out about what me and millions of people know. They've been in business since 1987. Must be doing something right. 800-448-TRIM. It's 800-448-TRIM. It's L.A. Weight Loss. No pills. They don't make you go to the gym. And it's fabulous. Individualized, one-on-one, L.A. Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM, 1-800-448-TRIM. It's L.A. Weight Loss, and that's one place where it's safe to say Wendy Williams sent you. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll continue with the Hour of Truth next on 107.5 WBLS. WBLS. Take it back, baby. Take it back. back, 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 back. School short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the ripple. Two, three, play. A little play from back in the day. And me, it's Wendy Man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. 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 Ladies with the net. Wendy's got the heat. Yeah. Dancing in the studio and whatnot. So, everybody, it's the Wendy Williams experience. Congratulations to friend of the show, Mo Steph. I understand he got married um, last weekend. Not this past weekend, but like last weekend or something like that. I don't know. You know, his personal life is very, very cloaked. So, um, originally, I thought he already was married with kids, but apparently... It was one of those wifey situations, and now she's the wife. So congratulations. Um, here's what the deal is on um, the woman in Philadelphia, LaToya Figueroa. Well, the Philadelphia police found her, um, and unfortunately, she's no longer alive. She was a pregnant woman. She was strangled. Now, the chief inspector there in Philly says that a tip led to a big break in the case on Friday night. Arrangements were made, surveillance was conducted, and later on, the night of Friday evening, early Saturday morning, the defendant, Stephen Poaches, led the team of investigators from his home in West Philadelphia directly to the body. Apparently, Poaches was the boyfriend who said he knew nothing about, you know, where his pregnant jump off was, being that um, he had a whole nother situation going on with his home life, you know, his own set of kids already. And this um, woman, LaToya, was somebody who he'd been apparently romantically involved with. Well, they say that Mr. Poaches dumped the body at a location in Chester, Pennsylvania, on the night of July 18th. That was the day, the last day that um, Latoya Figueroa was seen alive. Police believe that her body was dumped in a plastic bag that very night and that Mr. Poaches had helped, had help from another man in taking the body to Chester, Pennsylvania. Poaches was arrested moments after the police recovered the body um, and they say that he confessed to strangling her. He was being arraigned... Um, on two counts of murder, one for Figueroa and one for the unborn child. She was five months pregnant. 
And police say a tipster now qualifies for a reward in the case. $10,000. Wait, 10000 initially and jumped up to $100,000. So somebody's going to get $100,000. Um, probably his man's in them because he probably started to get panicky over the situation. You know, when you got a body on your hands, you start mm-hmm. kind of confessing to people. You know, strange things happen when you murder somebody, I guess so good. He's going to jail. Unfortunately, LaToya is not with us anymore and the child. And as I can recall in that case, he had kids with another woman and a whole another family situation. So um, he tried to get rid of the jump off. He even called Power 99. He did? And talked to Golden Girl about it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. They, even had, they talked on the radio about it. Wow. As if he was looking for the killer too. Oh, damn. Oh. Hey, Gigi, I would love to get a copy of that tape. Uh, we'll play it here on the show. <laughs> to hear how a guilty man sounds. You know what I mean? How, how do you sound when your mouth all dry? He's on the phone, so you can't see the body language all fidgeting and just putting the whole situation on blast. Wendy, as for Whitney's nephew, she made it very clear. You're absolutely right. I forgot. She made it very clear, this person says, that that was a uh, Houston. You can tell that if that's not a brown. You're right. When the nephew did walk in the house, Whitney was like, this is a Houston. This is not a brown. You're right. They do the, they do play that your side of the family, my side of the family kind of thing um, in that family. Oh, boy. Wendy, please address these artists who are putting extensions in their hair, i.e. Sean Paul and Bow Wow. Well, that's just to finish it off. I mean, you know, like Bow Wow already has a substantial amount of hair. But if he has extensions in it, that's probably just to finish it off at the bottom. Kind of like Queen Latifah does. Till it grows in. Well, no, 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 no. Because Shaylin, you and I have this conversation all the time. Shaylin is one of our longtime interns. And we have this problem, Shaylin, and we've talked about it before, where we have thin hair, and the longer it grows, the thinner it grows. So it might look cute and healthy if we cut it around our ears or gave ourselves a Halle Berry special, even if we let it go to our shoulders. But the second it gets past the shoulders, the thinner it gets. So we could use a finish off. Me, I just choose to just tuck everything away. Shaylin, though, got a finish off. Do you notice over the weekend she got a little weave? I got some pieces. She got some pieces bonded in just to finish off the bottom. Because otherwise it would look thin at the bottom. I understand. And it looks very natural and very nice. Only thing is that if you keep using rubber bands to tie it back, you're going to rip your hair out. Oh, really? Yeah, you should use something clothy. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to wait. Not a scrunchie, though. It's very middle America. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Lindsay Lohan is, Han is teamed up with Mattel and, and a Buena Vista Home Entertainment for an animated DVD. It's called My Scene Goes Hollywood. It's going to be about Lindsay and her friendship with Barbie. And it's due out on August 30th. And then there's a My Scene Barbie doll in Lindsay's likeness that goes along with that, but it's sold separately. But on DVD, so we're going to see the Lindsay Lohan doll being friends with Barbie in a full-blown movie. My scene goes Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Don Ho is in the hospital. Do you remember him, the Hawaiian um, Mm -hmm. entertainer? I didn't know he was still alive. He's 75. He was admitted in the hospital for observation after experiencing shortness of breath. On Friday, this all happened. He's expected to stay there for a few days, and no further information is being given about him. Um, He apparently is very busy. He's going to have to reschedule his show. He's still doing shows at the Waikiki Beachcomber Hotel. He was supposed to be performing there through the rest of the month. In the the meantime, he had a mainland concert tour set up to begin in September, and that'll have to be postponed. He was... He was doing Santa Fe and all kind of other places in California. And then he was going to go to the University of Oklahoma. August 13th, Don Ho just celebrated his 75th birthday. You slow down. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres is going to be hosting the Emmys on uh, September 18th. Yeah, she did the Emmys before back in 2001. Mm-hmm. I love her. I like when she dances. LL Cool J was on there the other day. We were analyzing it in the office, trying to pick out the surgical spots. Ow. Um, Oh, by the way, more information on those jeans that Jessica Simpson is doing for the Av, the big girl store. 
All right, so I already told you size 16 to size 26. She's got a nerve with a size zero, you know, <laughs> act like she cares. But they're selling for 50, for 59 bucks. So, you know, go check them out. Tell me if you like them. You know, spread the word. All right, coming up, keep it here. You watch that show Lost on ABC? Okay, we're going to talk about that. Tori Spelling, Eminem. Got to get to that Halle Berry, the Gwen Stefani. I know I've been promising. All right, you guys. Oh, and your phone calls are welcome. The 866-GET-WENDY. Dial now. I'll get the phone for you. Thanks. Wendy, man. My boss came into my office, and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I, I don't know what... Well, how can I? How should I handle that situation? <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Hallie, um, she's got a new man in her life. Do you guys know who Michael Ely is? Yeah, yeah. he was here on the show. Yeah. Yeah. But every time I see him, I know it. He's got that blue-eyed soul going on. And as usual, the how you doing aura. How you doing? When he's with her, though, he's got to stop switching. Oh. <laughs> I, look, look at this picture right here. They caught him in mid-switch. Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> 107.5 WBLS, New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. Right. What's up? This is Rachel True, Mona from Half and Half. What's up? This is Bill Bellamy. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. This is Chuck D, Public Enemy, number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your girl, Remy Martin, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Now, let me holler at you for a minute. What's up, y'all? This is Faith Evans, and you're listening to my girl, Wendy Williams. She's so crazy. 107.5 WBLS. Yo, did you catch this flashback? The plastic surgeon that I consulted before even using Dr. Al, he's hes in Philly. I won't mention his name. Uh, his office had broken windows outside the office building. Okay. He had classroom chairs in the waiting room. You know, the chairs that you pick up and you move it over so you can talk to your friend across the room. You know what I'm saying? He had um, cheap carpeting that was stained. Maybe he was cutting costs. It, no, I'm sorry, honey. Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> oh, it's going down. VH1 is in talks with Tori Spelling to possibly pick up her sitcom, Notorious, because her sitcom, Notorious, was dropped from NBC. As opposed to putting out more fire shows, <laughs> they're picking up the Tory Spelling show. All right, my channel. Apparently, this show, Notorious, boy, has she dropped from Grace in Hollywood. How are they going to drop Aaron Spelling's baby girl from NBC? Apparently, his cachet has dropped from Grace. Or maybe he's not backing his daughter like that. Well, he owned ABC. Well, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that, you know. Yeah. A spelling is a spelling. Hey, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Regardless of the channel. A spelling is a spelling. And Tori Spelling, have I ever told you that? She is friend in my head. Well, here's where our friendship started. When I realized that people were making fun of um, her 90210 stint and and the fact that she was even on that show and she couldn't act, and they were basing it on daddy owning everything and putting her in there. And then she became friend in my head because I was just like rooting for her. She was like an underdog to me. Even though she's the rich girl, she was like the underdog. In addition to that, she um, had that friendship with Shannon Dougherty, and you'd see them smoking Marlboros in the clubs and drinking wildly. And she just... She was trying her best just to be one of the girls in with being the princess. And she's friend in my head, you know? And then she's gone on and she's been in the cut. She's still friend in my head. She's as close to me as Heather Locklear. It's just that I don't talk to her that much in my head. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> I haven't talked to her in ages. So this is my first time talking to her when I'm talking to you guys right now. As a matter of fact, I, I knew that this show, Notorious, was supposed to be on NBC but I've never seen it. So I forgot all about her. Apparently, this show pokes fun at Hollywood, uh, at her privileged upbringing as Aaron Spelling's uh, daughter. 
And if the deal goes through with VH1, they're going to start shooting in November. So you can expect the next fire show to be sometime in 2008. Because between the Huggins and Celebrity Fit Club, they're about to start the Being Bonaducci. And, you know, I'm on the back burner over here. I see what's going on. Okay. Point taken. Mm-hmm. Um, Walmart, everybody, um, is about to have some new spokespeople. Despite the spokespeople, you can't erase in my mind that whole cuff them and stuff them, Sarge, mentality of Walmart. All right, so they're going to put Beyonce up in there as a spokesperson and Will Smith along with Garth Brooks. See, my mind is dwelling on the Garth part. And you will never be able to erase in my... mm -mm, mm -mm. And so, so what? LeBron James had to testify last week that he never gave a businessman approval to do this documentary about his life as a basketball star. Apparently, there's like $15 million involved with the lawsuit. And the guy who's producing it is this guy named Joseph Marsh. Now, he's suing LeBron. He contends that LeBron, um, who, as we know, went from, you know, high school um, ball star to NBA Rookie of the Year for the Cavaliers. Anyway, he's saying that um, LeBron broke a contract that cost him, the guy Mr. Marsh, millions of dollars, you know, in potential profits from the documentary. He owns this um, company called Magic Entertainment. And he says that, um, you know, LeBron promised to do this for him. And no, there was no paperwork, but it was like a gentleman's agreement. And he promised. In the meantime, LeBron says, I never told him, here's his quote, to proceed with a life documentary. I never told him yes, and I never told him no. The guy started shooting the footage from when he was like a beginning of his senior year in high school. Up through, I guess, you know, to the point where he got in the NBA. In the meantime, I kind of believe LeBron until I read down at the bottom of the page where it says, Jane, uh, Eddie Jackson and Gloria James, LeBron's mother and father, just settled a portion of the case. Apparently, Mr. Marsh had loaned the, the parents $100,000 at one point, and they agreed to pay back the loan plus uh, 10%. So, you know, something's rotten. Hello. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. Good. Hey, listen, um, I wanted to give you a little advice in reference to um, colon cleansing. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the biggest problems that people have, especially females, is your body has, females, mm-hmm. your body has, uh, you know, a fine line between good and bad bacteria. I know. And if uh, you're doing a colonic, it's good to have a probiotic. And you know you have a probiotic because you have to keep a probiotic in the refrigerator because it has enzymes in it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm figuring that the, the, the good bacteria live up in the front and everything in the back can be flushed out. No, it's all in the same area. The good bacteria is, is called floral. And when you do a colonic... Oh, I, take, I take a floral tablet every day. Well, do you keep it in the refrigerator? Is it refrigerated? Yes, yes I do. Uh, coincidentally. Oh, well, you know where I learned about floral tablet? When I was doing my detox. Right. Yeah. Right. That's good. All You're right. Doing good. And I wanted to give you props on coming a long way. Oh, well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Uh, Thanks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a celebrity spot. In, so okay. All right. I was in Las Vegas about a week and a half ago on vacation, mm-hmm. and we saw Boyz II Men in concert. They were beautiful. I don't know why they're not selling, but they are the best. They still have it. They do put on a good show. Yeah, they, it's amazing. I don't understand why they're not selling arenas like, you know, yeah. big stars are, but yeah, I, know I guess if they have the right management. All right. Well, thanks for calling. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Hi, this is Wendy. Yeah, there's a lot of wind in your phone. What's going on? I'm um, in the car. Sorry. Yeah, put your um, window up. Um, okay, I had a look. Okay. I just had a quick question, Wendy. Okay. You had said a mention about um, a Dr. Downey. Uh-huh. Uh, um, he's a dermatologist that mm-hmm. specializes in black skin. Mm-hmm. This was a while ago, but I didn't get to catch the number because I was driving. Yeah, I don't have the number with me right now, but her name is Janine Downey, and her practice is called Image Dermatology. 
and she's on Park Street or Park Place, Park something or another, in Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. Got it? And that's imaging, image dermatology? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. In Montclair, New Jersey. Hello? Wendy? Hi. Hello? How are you? I'm fine. Good. Am, is this like a recording or something? No, it's me. <laughs> How could it be recording and I'm actually answering this? I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't think I was going to get through. Oh, okay. Yeah, nope. Here you are. Hi. Welcome to the show. Hi. Um, is it Advice Hour yet? Well, Advice Hour is over, but I asked you guys to call. You can call about anything. Oh, Do you need sure. some help? Um, I got a question. Okay. I am, I've been seeing this guy for two months, and it's kind of like a jump off type situation, but I kind of set rules where I wasn't really supposed to get emotionally involved, but now I am. It happens. Yeah. How long did it take you to get emotionally involved from when you met? Mm, like a month. Yep, see? Yeah. All soft and pink. Like a girl. Yeah, like a girl. Mm-hmm. And recently he told me he's he has slept with someone else since me and him have been dealing with each other. Yeah, but you knew that it was a jump-off situation anyway. So exactly. that shouldn't have shocked you. So am I mad? Because, like, I feel kind of upset. Am I upset because I didn't? I stopped dealing with other men and just started dealing yeah. with him? Yeah, you're upset because you didn't follow the rules of, of what he it told you what it was to begin with, and that is you were not his only, you were not his girlfriend, you are his, um, his peace while he's still enjoying his life. And, and sometimes people don't want to spell that out because it hurts feelings. But as an adult, you're supposed to be able to read between the lines. Exactly. So you have nobody to be mad at but yourself. I know. Mm. But I do feel kind of upset. Like, am I wrong for being mad? Is no. I you're being show wrong. any animosity towards him? No, because, I mean, hell, I do the same thing. But now you have to decide. Do you want to stay in? Is he married, by the way? No. No, no, no. Okay. No kids, no wife, no baby mama, nothing. Now you have to decide, do you want to stay in his wife and wait it out, or excuse me, his life, and wait it out because may the best woman win? Or do you want to now carry on with your life like you normally would, which is you date him, you date other guys, you sleep with who you want, and, and everybody wears a condom? Definitely. So then carry on. And you don't owe him an explanation, just like he doesn't owe you one. All right. Freedom is a lovely thing if you really exercise your freedom. That um, it is. Yeah, it is. So That's why I set the rules because I do enjoy my freedom. Exactly. So don't get all mad and girly. Just go out there and have fun and just realize that you have limits because you're a girl. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. I love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. All pink and stuff. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hey. I need your advice. Okay. All right. Um, I'm 20. And I was in seeing this guy for about nine months. He's 23. And then I got a call from his girlfriend. And um, she's four months pregnant. But he still wants to be with me, and I still want to be with him. And you're, and you're 23? I'm 20. He's 23. Why do you want that baggage? You must be a dead-end chick yourself. No, but I really care about him. Okay, you must be a dead-end chick. What do you do with yourself? I mean, apart from him, what do you have going on in your life? Um, I work. No school? No. No career? I work. No, that's not a career. That's just a job. A career is something that you build. You can build a career even without going to school, but where do you work? What do you do? I work at Jefferson Hospital. Mm-hmm. And what do you do there? Environmental services. Environmental services. Do you have any kids yourself? No. I wouldn't throw my white life away on some, some boy with a newborn child. It, the dynamics of his relationship with his baby's mother are going to take priority over anything that you have to offer him. And he might say that it was a mistake that he got this girl pregnant while he's with you. She's four months pregnant. You've been with him for nine months. But, baby, let me tell you, his obligation is going to be to her, not to you and that child. But they only been together for a year. You've only been with him for nine months. Her hand is stronger than yours, sister. She's got him for a year, which is three months better than you, and she's got the baby. And, 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 a, and a baby is there until forever. Why would you want to throw away your life on a, a man, a deceptive man at that, who you have no paper or child with, and you're only 20? You're one of those dead-end chicks. What you need to do is leave him alone and, and, and really concentrate on building yourself up as a young woman. Okay. So that you know how to make these kind of decisions for yourself based on your own worth. You're worth more than that. Come on. All right. Are you cute? 
Yeah. You sound cute. <laughs> who do you look like who's famous? Um, nobody. I look like myself. Okay. How tall are you? 5'4". Mm -hmm. How much you weigh? 142. Mm -hmm. And did you finish high school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do when you, um, like, what do you want to do with your life? You just want to work job to job to job or do you want to make a career? No, I want to make a career. What do you want to be? I want to design clothes. Okay. Focus. And focus on that. Leave this man alone. All right. Believe me when I tell you, every dime that he gets now has got to go to this baby. At 23 year, years old, he's not going to have much left to take you out to the lo Red Lobster. All right. And Christmas will be spent with his child and his baby's mother. And he might tell you he doesn't care about his baby's mother. Trust and believe. He does. I know. Yeah. And there's nothing in this for you. All right. Leave him alone. Hey. <laughs> okay. Thank Bye. you. KDM says the moron in Philly got busted trying to move the body of his girlfriend and the cops followed him and when they found him and her he was wearing a bulletproof vest and carrying a gun at the time of his arrest this is Latoya Figueroa's uh, murderous man mm -hmm. well his new home's gonna turn him out ow uh uh alright oh, wait oh gosh I gotta hold the thought keep it here Wendy, man. Me and my wife have been married for 15 years. They're threatening to leave. What did you do? Had a problem with drugs. You got the drug voice. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Just asking, what's your drug of choice? You name it. Coke? Uh, yeah. Weed? Yeah. Crack? Yeah. Heroin? Yeah. E-pills? Yeah. Whippets? Alcohol. Gorilla? Yeah. PCP? Yeah. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Some women have all the time in the world to spend on their hair. Others barely have time to get out the door. What's your story? For hair that fits your life, you'll love JCPenney Salon's unique, personalized three-step approach. First, they consult. What are you looking for? How much time do you have? Based on what you want and need, they'll create your cut and color. Then they'll show you how to style it yourself. Your life, your hair. JCPenney Salons. Call today, 1-800-542-5565 for locations. Okay, everybody, it's 107.5 WBLS. Today's r and being Classic Soul and the Wendy Williams Experience. You know what? Just that quick, I'm turned off to the Andy Malinowski show on MTV. First of all, I wanted to believe that he was 12, no more than 15. That's the charm of the show. Have you ever, Nicole, have you ever seen that show, Andy Malinowski on MTV? Yes, that show, beans on my head. I love that guy. You know what? I fell in love with it, so I watched about 20 minutes of the first episode, like a yeah. happenstance, because there's nothing on on Sunday nights. <laughs> and then I found myself watching the whole second yeah. show. And, and at it, first you're like, this is silly. And then you're like, you're, you're laughing with it. Like, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, guess what? Get this. And first of all, you know Jimmy Kimmel's name is all over the show. You saw oh, it in yeah, the credits. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, um, the show is like Tom Green's show. And the reason um, that Jimmy Kimmel's name is all over it is because he found Andy Malinowski doing his show online. And Jimmy came to him and hooked him up with MTV. Oh. Okay, so I appreciate that. But this is what I don't appreciate because I cannot stand, you know, the posing. Hey, Wendy, Andy is not a kid. No. He's in his 20s. Shut up. Now I don't care about the show. No, no, no. Now I don't care about the show. Because now this is a very, very well thought out plotting oh, yeah. man who looks like a boy. Uh-uh. No, part of the charm of the show is that it's this kid. Kid. Yeah, exactly. Make it up the show. So that's not his parents' apartment. That's probably his apartment. He probably has got his wife and kids hidden in the other room until the <laughs> film. Exactly. Now all of a sudden I'm turned off. I don't care yeah. about the show. Oh well, Andy. You believe he's in his twenties though? No, that's just crazy. He doesn't even look like he went through puberty. Yeah. Stranger so things crazy. have happened. What are you guys kidding me? You're a karate kid, Ralph Macchio. What are you kidding me? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but does it make you feel differently about yeah, him, or you like it anyway? He's so silly and juvenile. Like I can't believe. But I love the fact that he's silly and juvenile, yeah. and the fact that I can actually laugh along and get into it. <laughs> I was finding myself like, oh my gosh, pull the blinds. I'm embarrassed by my behavior watching this kid. Oh man, twenty years old. I'm not watching anymore. You know what? If you're a day over, I don't, not for nothing. If you're a day over sixteen, yeah. I'm turned off. Because now I'm like, oh god, you got a problem. <laughs> He's <laughs> a funny show. <laughs> oh, boy. 
You don't anyway, you don't want yeah, you know, beans on the head. Where does water come from? And he just turned on the tap. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing. And I was by myself, and I'm laughing. I felt embarrassed. <laughs> You'll watch again. Did you see when he urinated on himself in the street and he's telling people? <laughs> And I'm thinking this kid is like 12 or 13 years old, and I'm reverting back to my Ocean Township days to laugh along with this kid. And then I'm doing an age check on myself, and I'm saying, I still possess my little girl, because I'm sitting here laughing at Andy. But let me find out he's 20, 28 years old. I'm not laughing no more. Uh, by the way, it's Monday. So every Monday night, WBLS, because we're still celebrating the 20, uh, excuse me, the 107 days of summer. Wingate Field is the place to be, 7.30 tonight for the 23rd annual Martin Luther King Jr. Concert Series. It's every Monday at Wingate Field. Tonight happens to be David Levy hosting Mighty Sparrow and Shaggy. Okay, Goose, refresh me. What does Mighty Sparrow sing? I know the name. Okay, he sings a whole lot of stuff, man. He's got a Give me something that, 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 that people... Gene and Dino, Rosita... Something that used to play on the radio back in the day, Goose. Both of them. Um, he's got so many songs, man. <laughs> Goose cool. <laughs> he's, he's so cool. He's a sunglasses. It's so hard to pick out a, a, a Sparrow song. Um, All right. Well, never mind. People who love Gina Mighty Diana, Sparrow know exactly songs. who it is. He's the Calypso King of the World. Yeah. Maybe I didn't know him from the radio here in New York. Maybe I knew him because I used to play him when I was in the Virgin Islands, when I was a disc jockey there. Ooh, yeah. Paying your dues. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, and Shaggy's going to be there, too. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Tonight at Wingate Field. Um, so for a full schedule of what's going on with BLS during our 107 days of summer, if you can't go tonight, maybe you can go next Monday night, and you can find out who's going to be on the schedule then, too. WBLS.com. Okay. Um, LA. Huh? LA. Oh, I do LA Weight Loss? Hi, everybody. It's me, Wendy Williams, to talk to you about L.A. Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. I mean, where do you want to go with this? I've been crowing about L.A. Weight Loss for the longest time. It still works. It works for me. It works. It works for me. It'll work for you, too. They've been in business since 1987. Um, and I can tell you a whole host of places where you can eat when you're on L.A. Weight Loss. Because it's not so stringent that you have to weigh your food and you can only eat their food and it's prepackaged and stuff. You can eat at IHOP, Houston's, Friendly, Hula Hands, KFC, come on, Chi Chi's, Don Polo, um, Dairy Queen, Cheesecake Factory, mm. Mm. Fridays, Bob Evans, California Pizza Kitchen, Boston Market. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're not limited when you're on LA Weight Loss. What else do you need to know about this uh, L.A. weight loss? Oh, did I say Mickey D's? Okay, because that's for you. I know sometimes you're on the run. Mickey D's, you can eat L.A. weight loss. Your weight loss counselor will explain to you how all this happens. For 15 years, L.A. weight loss has helped millions of people lose millions of pounds. It's not another quick fix. Their program is a proven weight loss program that is healthy, safe, and long-lasting. There are doctors all over the country that recommend L.A. weight loss to their patients, and there are L.A. weight loss centers every place. The important part of the LA Weight Loss program is their individualized one-on-one -on -one weight loss counseling, which I love. Anytime you have a question, a challenge, or a success that you want to brag about, call your LA Weight Loss counselor. They will they'll explain to you how it how it works. During your visits to LA Weight Loss, they'll weigh you, they'll review what you've been eating, they'll take your blood pressure and your measurements. No appointment is necessary. You just pop into LA Weight Loss whenever it's convenient for you. They'll answer any question that you have, and your one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor is always there for you. Once you lose your weight, you'll go on maintenance. That's what I was on for a while. During maintenance, um, you learn to get adjusted to your new healthy weight and your, and your new healthy eating habits. Once you get off maintenance, you're on your own. I've been on my own for about, I would say, since December. I've been on my own, and I've maintained my weight loss. Thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. Thank you so much. And a shout out to my weight loss counselor, Diane. Don't you miss our one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselings? Because we used to talk about everything.
You know, your weight relates to so many different areas of your life. They don't just have you come in there and talk about your, just your weight. If you're having problems dealing with men because now you got all this new attention or if you are just getting on the program and you want to sit in your office and cry or, or your, your counselor's office because everybody gets their own counselor and cry. I mean, you know, fights with your mother over your weight, issues from your childhood dealing with your weight. Trust and believe. It's like going to a shrink that's helping you lose weight and the weight loss is um, attainable. Call LA Weight Loss and find out all about it. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Thank you, LA Weight Loss. Mr. Engineer, please, some music. Would you please, would you give us a record, por favor? It's the Wendy Williams experience. Before we go today, let me just um, and give you again the results of the People Poll question, which is on the website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. On Friday, I wanted to know how many women are turned off by Martha men. You know, the whole cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, making the tile shine better than you. Not a gay thing, just a Martha thing. 75% of women said, yes, they're turned off. 25% of women said, no, they're not turned off. Now, I got a letter from Chandra, and Chandra says, um, our, uh, regarding men who go Martha, Wendy, think, Wendy, women think that they want a Martha man. I dated a Martha man once, and I noticed, um, notice I said in the past, maybe women need to date a Martha man to appreciate a real man. Aw, that's not to say a Martha man is not a real man, but these are Chandra's words. And she's saying, um, I am now happily married to a very masculine man, and I get thoroughly turned on watching him do things. I don't get turned off. I don't get turned on by a souffle. On the contrary, it makes me think he doesn't think I can do it myself. That's my thinking. Back off. That's my lane. The souffles. Back off. Bottom line, I have many single friends and not even one of them wants a Martha man. A Martha man, excuse me, the Martha men that I know have trouble meeting women because women think they're gay or closeted. So that's Mar that's um, Chandra's perception of a Martha man, which, by the way, is very close in line with my own perception, you know. However, now we're going to flip it around for the man on the website. Art, you put this in your word, Butch. Couldn't you think of something else to put? No, because I don't like Martha men. You don't like Mar you, you, I what? Like, I don't like the term Martha men. A man who could clean after himself. Martha man, come on now. That's responsibility. He live alone. Well, anyway, the question on the website now is um, for the men. Are you turned off by women going Butch? Yeah, I want a woman under my car, my hood, hood of my car. Well. We're more on the lawn. Why? If she's doing it in something sexy. See, to me, women can do it all, and we can just flip it around and make it real sexy-like. So we can't make a souffle in Timberlands? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Easy. Look at you. She's thinking, y'all. No. Okay. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. now you're undermining me. You know, like, I can do it or, or call out and get it taken care of. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's uh, move on. Eric Benet is still talking about how many women he slept with while he was married to Halle Berry. He said at one point he was so desperate to rescue his four-year-old married that he thought by committing adultery he was actually rectifying the problems. Please. In the meantime, 50 Cent has been hit uh, by a... Excuse me. 50 Cent has hit... Um, Gary Barbera, the famed auto people in, in Philadelphia... With a $1 million lawsuit claiming that um, the business used his name and likeness without his permission. Apparently, Barbera is running an advertise, uh, advertisement in Philadelphia in the newspapers. They're promoting his company with a picture of 50 and the words say, just like 50 says. Well, that's not right. If there was no paperwork and no agreement. Oh, I couldn't imagine something. Oh, I know. Because it's in Philly. You figured 50 wasn't reading anything past the New York Post. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. You think it's around. Taking advantage of what could be misconstrued, but sometimes called a Negro's ignorance. ignorance. 
Well, the laugh is on, and we'll just find out who wins that lawsuit. Do you watch the television show Lost? I don't watch it, but I know a lot of people do. It's been on TV for a long time. Well, there's a Los Angeles writer who's suing ABC and Touchstone Television for allegedly... You see, because I was into... Uh, um, back in the day, remember Land of the Lost? Sid and Marty Croft, remember? And Sigmund and the Sea Monsters and all like that? Okay, well, listen to how everything ties in. Uh, this guy in Los Angeles is suing ABC and Touchstone for allegedly um, appropriating his 1990, excuse me, 1977 television concept Lost for the current hit today, Lost. It's Anthony Spinner whose work that you see, he's saying. And the lawsuit was filed on Friday claiming breach of contract and fraud, among other things. Mr. Spinner is claiming that he was hired by Sid and Marty Croft Productions back in 1977 to write and produce and develop a script for a TV program to be produced by ABC that would be called Lost. So while Mr. Spinner is thinking that his pilot, his concept didn't get picked up, maybe they even thought that he was dead by this point. But he's alive and well and sees his TV show on TV now and he's coming for what is due to him. Good. Do you think Mariah Carey's happy that Eminem's in rehab, being that he blasted her phone messages all over the concerts? And now the concert tour has stopped, so now all that stuff, you know, has been shut down regarding him playing Mariah's, um, hey, baby, why haven't you called me? Let me tell you something. You got me mesmerized. (laughs) Well... Back in 2002, Rolling Stone magazine did an interview with um, with Marshall. And at that point, um, they asked him about his relationship with Mariah. It was a, almost like a boyfriend-girlfriend thing. And Marshall says, here's his quote. There's truth to that. But on the whole personal level, I'm not really feeling it. I just don't like her as a person. I got to be honest. I learned a lesson from it. Don't believe the hype. I have respect for her, but she doesn't really have it all together. I'll just say that, and also that she's a beautiful woman. Well, a year after the attack, apparently, um, Eminem decided to use her voice in samples. And now Mariah's talking and she says, I don't know what the hell he's doing. It's a little excessive. If somebody has nothing better to do than sit around listening to old phone messages, then I'm a little concerned about that, Mariah says. First of all, oh, God, I only have a minute left. Anyway, you get the gist of it. The gist of it is is that Eminem's in rehab have for sleeping pills is what they're calling it. And um, his tour has been stopped, postponed, canceled, whatever, so he can get himself together. And so, therefore, he has no more opportunity at this particular juncture to play the Mariah messages. And um, on Friday, I was reading you word for word what the Mariah messages were saying. And, you know, they were, why haven't you called me? Why don't you want to see me? Why haven't you called me? Like that. I can believe the messages. But, you know, that was at a time when Mariah was on the brink. And then she broke down and now she's back. And perhaps it's true. And she's trying to deny. I can dig it. All right, I got to go. I never got to Gwen Stefani, did I? Okay, I promise you I'll save that. We'll do that first story tomorrow. All right, y'all. I love you for listening today. God willing, we'll be together again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Peace party, people. (laughs) See you later. Good night. Program complete. Okay, all kind of good stuff going on for the bonus hour tonight. Make sure that you keep it here, okay? It's no music. It's all talk. And I need you to join in on the conversation. 866-GET-WENDY. It's 866-GET-WENDY. And I'll be giving away passes for a play. And we can have conversation. Advice hour um, is over. But the bonus hour encompasses everything. Advice, gossip, sometimes interviews, prizes, and whatnot. Everything but the music, which I love. (laughs) Keep it here, everybody. The phones are open in the boat. Baby, I know you're worthy. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to 
I'm throwing a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour gonna last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. New York. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the bonus hour. I see Tupac has, um, they're unveiling a seven-foot statue of Tupac in Stone Mountain, Georgia on September 13th. And September 13th will actually mark, can you believe this, the nine-year anniversary of the shooting death of Tupac? Wow. It's been nine years. I still love song. Yeah. So it's going to be risen on a three-foot base, and it's going to be inside of a fountain shaped like a gothic cross. It's going to look a lot like um, there apparently was a tattoo on his back that they say that um, this is going to look a lot like. The statue will serve as a reminder to everybody who visits the Peace Garden, <clears throat> which happens to be the 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 commemorative center that his mom, uh, Afini Shakur, has put together for him there in Stone Mountain, Georgia. The statue unveiling is free. Tickets for the reception are 10 bucks, and a donation of $100 or more will allow you access to the reception, um, as well as a commemorative brick that can be engraved for donation toward the One Brick at a Time campaign. Oh, all this stuff goes back into the Tupac Center. That's not what the center is called. I actually, the name of the center slips my mind, but this, 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 um, statue of Tupac is actually all a part of a whole Tupac, um, memorabilia structure with like poetry inside, some of his artwork and, you know, so on and so forth. All going on right there in Stone Mountain, Georgia. What's so special about Stone Mountain, Georgia as it relates to Tupac? He was from Baltimore, right? Originally Brooklyn. I believe, yeah, Brooklyn to Baltimore to L.A. What about Stone Mountain, Georgia? Why is the, all this stuff in Stone Mountain? I don't know. Hello? What's good, Wendy? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what's well, really good? After that, what's good? I totally didn't expect you to say how you doing. <laughs> but it's, it's part of the fun of the show. Are you gay or are you hetero? Yeah, it, it's it's fun. I'm glad that you can see the humor and how you're doing. It is a funny saying, isn't it? Yeah, but you 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 got that a lot. You kill me every time you say that. Thank you. So what's going on? <laughs> yeah, what's your name? Greg. Hey, Greg. So what's going I was on? Just calling in. I was like, you know, let me see if I can actually get through on the phone line. Oh, so oh, you're just doing a test? That's what? And you're doing a test? Uh, basically, mm. boom, and you 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 passed the first time. All right, Greg. Well, thanks for calling. Absolutely. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's funny. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Turn your radio down. Yeah, turn your radio down. Yeah, the radio's not on. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. How you doing? Hello? I'm on the air? Yeah, hi. How you doing? I just wanted to chime in about the Martha Man thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've been married for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And my husband is as manly as can be. Thank God. Okay. But um, he had a white collar job, and recently he left his job and became a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, he's been cooking. And I have to tell you that him cooking some really good meals has been like the biggest turn on. It's been wonderful. That's nice. So, and you know, as far as the decorating and all that's concerned, that's my department. But um, he just tells me whether he likes it or not, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. But. Just wanted to let you know. Also, I wanted to tell you one more thing. I love the bonus hour. I catch, try to catch it every day on the ride home. I love doing it. I'm glad. And um, I also love Best Love, and Trevor Hollywood is doing a great job. Thank you. But I just cannot take another day if I hear um, ODB's family again. Please. I, you know what? I win <laughs> every time we play it, but it's got to be done. Oh my God! Maybe we need to store that. We need to put that flare back there, and then and then re -hit, hit you with it around Christmas time. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, when it's when it, when you're ready to laugh again. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. All right, Wendy. Thanks. T take care. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye.
Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hey. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Wonderful. I just want to let you know I'm, I really enjoy your show. Well, thank you very much. I, I don't know really what else to say. I didn't know if you were um, playing for tickets or anything like that. No, so we don't have any tickets right this very moment. I'm going to let you guys know in a minute. What are you doing, driving or are you at your house? No, I'm at my home. What are you, making uh, dinner? No, I'm just going through my, my papers and my budget and stuff like that. What are you, single, married, you got kids, what? Well, I'm single and I have two kids. Mm -hmm. Where are the kids? Well, my son is watching TV mm -hmm. and my daughter, she's hanging out. Mm -hmm. How old is your daughter, a teenager? 17. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how old is your son? 12. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to make him for dinner? Probably chicken wings, macaroni and cheese. Yeah. You know, regular stuff. I'm not a great cook. <laughs> yeah. Are the chicken wings homemade? Yeah. Or did you buy them already pre-cooked? They're homemade. And then the macaroni and cheese, is that homemade or is that pre-cooked? No, that's pre-cooked. Yeah. What do you, did you ever use the country crock pre-cooked macaroni? No, I've never used it. Oh, my God. It's better than ma It's better than the crafts because you don't have to boil anything. Oh, really? It comes in the same container as the shed spread, you know, the, the butter. Right, right. But it's the macaroni and cheese. They also make rice. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my kid happens, he's having uh, macaroni and cheese and chicken wings for dinner tonight also. The chicken wings I get from the, the food town, the pre-made department, is delicious. Oh, okay. And then and then the macaroni and cheese from that. And then I did steam him a couple of Brussels sprouts. Those are homemade. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, we're busy, aren't we? That's, yeah, yes. But, yes. But yet and still we're ready to reject a Martha man. Well, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I yeah. mean, to me, African, well, I'm just speaking for African-American women. Mm. We are constantly complaining about not having enough enough african-american men out here yes you know half of them in, well i'm not saying half but a lot of them are in jail a lot of them are dating other other races and men right and mm. you're complaining because someone is a martha man yeah i mean i think that's really silly yeah yeah how long has it been since you had a steady well i just recently broke up with my my significant other, and he was crazy. So okay. I wouldn't mind a Martha man. Yeah, or any man, right? Listen, any good man <laughs> that's going to sit there and help me. Okay, I'll take it. I understand. Well, I appreciate you spending time with the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. You know, I was listening to you talking about decorating the office with pictures of celebrities feet i think that's a great idea i think it's hot yeah 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 and I'm, the other thing mm -hmm. there's a website wideworldofsoul.com it's for men with foot fetish for only women with size nine and wide feet and above oh let me write this down and get art in here wide yes. what's it called it's, it's wide like w-i-d-e uh -huh. world w-o-r-l-d of soul like f-o-l-e yes dot com Ooh. And they got a preview on there, like you can just click on and see like all these women with wide big feet. Oh. They have women who ten WW thirteen, oh. all kinds of craziness. It's really hot though, because oh. the women are all big women, large size women, wide feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's it's different from like the size five and six. Oh, it you know? sounds gruesome. Yeah, it's it's. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Oh, all right. As soon as, as, as soon as Art comes in the room, I'm going to tell him about it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Tell, and listen, why don't get LL up there? I want to hear what he got to say. He's not coming anytime soon. He won't come. Well, here's the thing. You know, we sit behind his back. We talk about his plastic surgery, which I firmly believe he's had. We talk okay. about his sexuality. And then we want him to come up. I mean, maybe one day he'll come up. Maybe he won't. Yeah, I wish he would, though, because I'm, I'm curious. Because he, he, looks, he looks good. I think he looks like... But yeah. I want to know how he got like that. That was, like, really quick. I mean, do we really care? He's not our man. In my opinion, he had plastic <laughs> surgery, and it's okay because he's not my man, and he right, still right. looks good. But yeah. if he was my man trying to preserve his looks with some old plastic surgery and stuff, I'd be like, oh, hell no. That's the madness, right? You know, but, you know, that's not our man, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is that a lusty so character. Curious, mm -hmm. Well, listen, I love your show. Keep it up. Thank you, and thanks for the website tip. No problem. Check it out. All right, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, bye-bye. I took one more call. Hello? Yeah, hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Oh, Wendy, what's up? Um, this is Charlie. Hey, Charlie. What's going on? Um, I just, you know, I just want to give a couple of shout-outs. Go ahead, Charlie. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, is this record or I'm on here? Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, let me give a shout-out to my man, Quan, and P, and Blunt, and, and, you know, I want P and everything, and, uh, I just want to say, yo, Wendy, I, I love you, yo. I listen to you every day. Thank you, Charlie. Word up. I mean, you, you get me through the day from 2 to 7, yo, every day. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Take care. Bye-bye. All right.
Did you hear his friends' names? Qua, T, and Blunt. Hood, the hood. Is that how you introduce, like, say you, you know, hey, Grandma, this is Qua, this is T, this is Blunt? This is crew, boys. Mm -hmm. It's so terrible to hear over the weekend about that young man who plays football for the 49ers, Thomas Heron. Oh. I mean, the game was played. They were in the locker room getting their after-game debriefing. He collapsed. Next thing you know, he's dead. The rest of the um, team is on the plane getting ready to go back to um, San Francisco. It's too hot to be playing ball like that. I mean, if it's hot here, you know how it is there. Six feet three, 310 pounds. Whew. 90 degree weather. Mm -hmm. Fully suited up. <sighs> what a sport. What a sport. That's one of the hazards of that particular game. I guess that's why they get paid the big bucks. Because if you survive, then you deserve it. Because one blown knee or one whatever, and you're not working for the rest of your life. What is he supposed to do? And the food you eat. And the food. and I, I mean, just, you know, the whole bit. The whole bit. It was just <clears throat> it was very unfortunate to hear about that. Very unfortunate. So Olivia Newton-John's ex-lover of nine years has mysteriously disappeared, and there's speculation that he may have faked his own death. The other one that I want. And I'm telling you. I heard you through my radio. Well, he's a photographer, and his name is Patrick McDermott, and he's 47 years old, and he failed to arrive back home after a boating trip that he took on June 30th. So his disappearance was just made public yesterday. And Olivia is so distraught. Well, she's always had a, a thing for younger men. You know, she's 56 now, and he's 47. By the way, you know, she's a breast cancer survivor, and... and um. She's desperately hoping that they find him alive, but nobody's had luck yet. <clears throat> there was an American chartered vessel and the crew, and, and they went for an overnight fishing expedition off of uh, San Pedro, California. And he was not on board when they returned the next day. So, man overboard, or maybe he's just left life. You know, when I used to work on St. Croix, this is one of the like creepy things about living on an island or, or living in a remote area, I guess any place. This could happen, I guess, any place. There were a lot of people that fit this dude's MO right here. Like, I just wanted to back out of life. So I, you know, just disappeared. And I met more than five people when I lived on St. Croix for my first radio job right out of college who just wanted to back out of this life here on the mainland. And and they did not do it legally. Like, they were either on the run from the DEA. Not to say, because that's part of the, that's the United States Virgin Islands, but it's kind of like by the time you get to looking in St. Croix, they just said, oh, hell, let them run. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. Mad fugitives, fugitives from the law, fugitives from child support and wife, like, you know, like, I met this one guy from Queens and he used to own a deli, one of these little bodegas. He had a wife, I'll never forget this, and three kids. And the dude was about, geez, he seemed like old as dirt to me at that particular point. I think I was like 21 at the time because I had just gotten out of college, you know what I mean? He's like 35. And he looked a lot like Hulk Hogan. He reminded me of Hulk um, because he stayed tan like that. And he had, you know, that half hair, that stadium cut with all the long hair. And then he put on his baseball cap. You couldn't tell. But in the same build and whatnot, this dude... Had this, this, all these responsibilities here in a business. One day decides to go to work, stays on the train, gets on a plane, and goes down there with nothing but the clothes on his back, and the rest is history. And he was living down there at that time. At the point that I'd met him, he was like been down there for like two years. I don't know. It just gave me a, like a really creepy feeling. First of all, it's a big world, but it's a small world. You know, you could like, how do you know somebody's not going to catch you? I mean, you're telling me the story. I could get on the phone to. That's the first thing. But the second thing is, just when people think remote living like that is such a luxury, they're all kind of characters. I mean, I met good people, but I also met some really seedy people running from their responsibilities. And I don't know that this is what happened to Olivia Newton-John's man, but I'm just saying, it happens. It happens. And I met more people that were running from basic responsibilities, not necessarily the law, but basic responsibilities. Like, oh, you know, I've had this job for, you know, eight years and I'm saddled and it always was with the wife and the kids or just the kids or, you know, the girlfriend and, you know, just pressure, pressure, stress, can't deal with the stress of the mainland. And as opposed to bowing out, tying up loose ends and then moving to the island, they just jump on a plane.
jump on a plane. Mm-hmm. Reginald Hudlin of the famous Hudlin brothers. Well, uh, Reginald is vowing to turn the w- the um, uh, BET News Department around. He's here's his quote: "I care about black people and our future welfare. BET is the cornerstone of our lives. Blacks are to entertain, excuse me, entertainment. What Arabs are to oil. We as a nation can conquer the world, and BET is our vehicle. So." I don't know what he intends on doing, but he, one of his um, main goals, they say, is to make BET like our CN or our like CNN. Mm. Good luck. Growing up, Gotti comes on tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I got my snacks already in my mind. <laughs> Brussels sprouts, lemon pepper. You know, a little one shot of, um, you know, 100-calorie snacks or maybe a Weight Watchers snack. I, I keep those in the freezer. And some water. A glass of wine. No, no wine. You know, I, I drink enough. Yeah, you know, I, I prefer to drink socially. On the weekends, I like to sip <clears throat> if somebody's coming over. It helps the food to digest. Well, so does me being tired. I mean, and quite frankly, a few Brussels sprouts, it's not like I'm eating a big, you know, turkey dinner with the macaroni and cheese and stuffing and stuff. You know what I mean? It's not a lot of food. Wine helps the food to digest. That's what they say. I only like to be foggy on Wednesday nights during the week. That's my appointment at the Laugh Factory. Get all foggy in the head. Wake up all late and wrong. <clears throat> But Victoria Gotti was, uh, I saw her on the Fox 5 News this morning. And uh, you could definitely tell she lost weight. Her arms were very thin like a Lindsay Lohan. She's lost 25 pounds. She says she's 42. Okay, we'll go with that. So she says she's 42 and she learned that she was sick um, back in November that um, after she had a mammogram. And I saw her on the news this morning. She does what I do. She gifts herself um, a, a, a full you know, health check for her birthday. I do that. It can be the best day of your life or the worst day. But, you know, either way, it's, it's a reminder that, you know, every time of the year at this particular time when your birthday rolls around, <clears throat> you get checked. Well, apparently everything was fine. And um, she delayed telling her sons. What they said this morning was that, hold on. <clears throat> what they said, uh, what she was saying this morning is that, you know, she and her boys were in Italy and um, some wags were following her around. And then she got a telephone call from New York from a friend of hers who's a wag saying, look, they're about to expose this story regarding you and breast cancer. Do you know anything about this? So she was like a little nervous on how to tell her sons and stuff like that, particularly the youngest one is a little sensitive, you know, to it. He's 14, Frank. Anyway, I look forward to seeing all of them tonight. And Victoria, I'm glad that everything worked out for you. And, uh, you know, I like your show. 42, my ass. (laughs) It's okay. Morgan Freeman, everybody, has signed up. Are you ready for this one? To be a passenger on the world's first commercial space shuttle flight. He paid $216,000. He will be one of eight passengers on the Virgin Galactica, set to launch in 2008. Well, here he is, 68 years old. Ready to die. (laughs) Damn, Goose. (laughs) He said ready to die. Damn. At the time that they take off, he'll be 71 years old. Talking about three, two, one, blast off. Are you ready to find out who else he's going to be in there with? Sigourney Weaver. Accent on weave. I saw your tracks when I stopped you on the red carpet. And you looked at me like you wanted to call me an N-word B. Oh, yeah, she de- she definitely gave me the look. And so that's when I noticed that she has thin hair. Shaylin. Oh, wait, where's she? Oh, she, uh, wait, Shailene's not in here. Sorry. Okay. She has thin hair. She's Sigourney Weaver. Wrong woman, Susan Sarandon. Oh, Miss Wendy's so crazy. I'm a mess. All right. Well, Sigourney Weaver from Alien, right? She's from Alien. 
And Paris Hilton's going to be on the space shuttle and Victoria Principal. They're going to be about... Well, anyway, we'll see what happens. But $216,000. If you were my dad, I'd be nervous. I get nervous when my father rides his bike. You know. In an, in a, on the main streets. I remember years ago, he got hit. Uh, just the back tire. And just, you know, made the bike go all akimbo. And he ended up in the bushes. Well, thank God everything was okay. He's on his way to the library. You know, he writes. So he's on his way to the library. He's got all of his sharpened pencils and, you know, his tablets and, you know, all of his stuff on the saddlebags on the back of the bike. And he's riding in Florida, going to the library. I'm so glad everything turned out, you know, fine. But I just, oh gosh, shout out to all the older people um, listening right now. Many of us, your children and your family members who are younger, we just look at you when you try to be adventurous as just sit down. Be grateful you made it this far and just sit down. We don't want you to do anything. We're so protective of you. We get nervous. But in actuality, we're going to want to be doing it, too, when we get older. But we just get nervous. We're just so grateful to have you around. One of the windows, I remember uh, before my, my parents, they stop at our house before they go to Martha's Vineyard. So, you know, the, 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 we get the crank, 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 crank out, crank, crank, crank in. So one of the windows didn't crank all the way in. My father wants to get a ladder and go on the side of the house. Little does he know we're not that kind of people. We don't even have a ladder. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a step stool. That's for me doing my little, you know, makeshift stuff around the house. But, you know, if you want a ladder, you got to call somebody in. And I'm glad because what he wanted to do, he just wanted to simply climb on the side of the house push the window in and have me on the other side of the crank, you know, to lock it. And I'm all nervous and whatnot. And then I'm like, oh, thank God we don't even own a ladder. Thankfully. I don't need him up on a ladder. And I don't need Morgan Freeman. If he was my dad going to space, ugh, there, family meeting behind his back. Family meeting. Whatever he needs to get on this space shuttle, that will be conveniently lost that day. Whether it's a passport, Whatever. Lifelong dream, my ass. You're not going to do that at this point. You should have thought about that when you were 41, not 71. (laughs) And we're just so protected. And we do it for the love of you. Where is Arthur? I wanted to tell him about a website. Shailene, where's Art? I don't know. I'll go find him. No, it's okay. Um, Well, you're on sound effects? Yeah, I'll do it for now. Do you know what you're doing? Yes. How you doing? (laughs) How you doing? All right. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh, okay. (laughs) You missed a couple beats, but that was pretty good shit. Oh, here's Art. There's a new website. It's called. (laughs) Exactly. He's he's having a fit for Shaylin. You know, from the Girl Friday crew. She's sitting in his spot. How you doing? These girls are learning. Look, she even gave him a how you doing. Artie, there's a new website. As my as my son would say, "Mommy, there's a new there's a new movie coming to town." Art, there's a new website coming to town. Oh, drum roll! It's called oh, yeah, Shaylin. Twenty nine. It's called WideWorldOfSoul.com for men who want to luxuriate in a size nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen foot. S O L A. Look, he's picking up a piece of paper and writing it. <laughs> WideWorldOfSoul.com. Art would like big feet, guys. No, I, he doesn't like big feet. He is grossed out by them. And quite frankly, there is a need because nobody wants to see all that. Take this from a woman. My shoe today, I am sporting a size 13. The shoemakers actually put the big shoes, the shoe stores, way in the back like you have to ask for them. They'll have the same shoe, but they'll have all the five, size five, six, and seven sitting out. Because this, nobody wants to see all this sitting there on the, on the damn, in the window display. Like, damn, what kind of gorilla is wearing that? And I am not offended. I'm not offended. A lot of the big, big shoe, um, big women's shoes, even if it's a nice Gucci shoe. You take that same Gucci shoe that looks so nice as a size 8, and you throw it in the window as a size 11. What? Tragedy. Comedy. All at the same time. (laughs) Nobody wants to see all that. So I would imagine there's a lot of comedy and tragedy on WideWorldOfSoul.com. And I take care of my feet, so please. But I'm saying, even though I take care of them the whole bit, you know, 
it, is, it still is what it is. That's where Paris and Hilton and I, we have that in common. If we could change one part of our body, what would it be? Feet, of course. But if you made my feet any smaller, I'd fall over. So I really, you know, God knew what he was doing. S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Well, I'm going to do this again. And if you're going to say something, you got to say it loud. S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Saturday! Obviously, nobody knows the Bay City Rollers in this room. So, therefore, I'm not talking to you. The Bay City Rollers take me back to my childhood in Ocean Township. Hello? And they did this great song called Saturday Night. Saturday Night. I do have the right band, don't I? A former Bay City Roller um, member who happened to have been the lead singer, Les McGowan, is due to appear in court tomorrow on charges of conspiracy, conspiracy to supply cocaine. <laughs> well, exactly, Shaylin on the buttons. He's 49 years old now. He was arrested on June 1st. He remains um, on bail and will appear. He lives in South England. Remember they did the song shang lang and Bye Bye Baby? Was that the Bay City Rollers or the Cars that did Saturday night? Somebody who was listening? 866 Get Wendy? Here in my car. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's the car. I That's know cars, that. Yeah. Well, obviously the car word is in it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he was arrested as a part of a big police dragnet. Four other men were being held also. And so the other three are in jail, and um, and he's out on, on bail. So just thought I'd pass that along to you. Saturday night. We need to go into a break. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and this is a terrible. Did you hear about the shaken baby syndrome? by that damn baby nurse. The hulky monster, that monster that she is, that's how they described her. A hulky monster nurse has confessed to violently shaking and seriously injuring two babies in her care. The newborns were allegedly attacked by a 240-pound woman by the name of Noella Alec while she worked at the family's Manhattan and Long Island homes. Both babies suffered multiple broken bones and brain damage. Oh, my God. She's a monster. That's the father, uh, Patrick Donahue. He's 34. One of, um, he's the father of one of the baby girls. The baby was five days old. Well, it, you know what? I'll let you mourn. I was about to say, well, excuse me. What is a five-day-old baby doing in the care of and solely in the care of. But you know what? It could be a big house. The mother and father could have very well been in the house. Just in the other room. Well, the nanny is the monster. This is the, the nanny, the monster. And then in, in Manhattan, she did the same thing to a seven-pound little girl. And this is what she says. This is her excuse. I tried to feed her with the bottle, but she wouldn't wake up. At that point, I began to shake her and shook her hard. That little baby suffered cerebral cortex, broken bones, uh, collar, including the collarbones, the, the ribs, and whatnot. Oh, my gosh. I know it happens all the time. I know. It happens with frustrated moms, too. The frustrated mother will, will shake. Mm-mm-mm. And what do you do? so terrible right now you know after you have a baby you, you be- can barely take your maternity time because dry- jobs are so hard you know your boss is willing to give your job to the next person they don't like the complications of you even having to talk about a baby you know a lot of times after you have a baby you act like you're the only one who's ever had a baby you know i went through it you'll go through it they go through it you know all like that but it happens and then you quickly learn that th- in the workplace nobody cares they don't care what they care about is you getting back and being productive at your at your job. And um, so women feel pressured, feel pressured to, you know, after the baby comes out, tuck everything back in and, and, and get back to work. Yeah. Then we have to get, you know, quick child care. Mm-mm-mm. 
Where did this woman come from? What agency is this? Not that it's the agency's fault, but did they do a background check on her? Does she have assaults with her? All right, we'll continue with this story and um, and more. Art, I know the computer in here doesn't work. Are you running out of the room to try to go to that um, yes. website? You don't mind, do you? No, as long as you come back in and report what you say. I got you. All right, so Art's report, the shaking nanny, um, and a smattering of other things as the bonus hour rounds out right here on the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. 107.5 WBLS. What's up? This is Andre Benjamin, Andre 3000, Benjamin Andre, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. So the day is almost over, and here comes Zoe, looking beat. <laughs> Zoe, the queen of all interns, virgin. And so then you just put this in my hand. I thought that this was from the fax machine. And here she is running things. <laughs> She's got an intern contact sheet. Very organized, Zoe. I like this. Dear Wendy Williams Experience staff, look at Zoe. First of all, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to Miss Wendy and Art for selecting me as the new queen of all interns. I will do my very best to run things in an orderly fashion. You're getting started on the right foot, Zoe. To all of the interns, new and old, please make note of my contact information. And there she is. For the next three weeks, I will be working on a project at my job. That will be the job that pays her, y'all. <laughs> and I will be coming in periodically during the week, but only after six. Oh, but if you need to reach me, here's all her telephone. From time to time, I will need to get in contact with you. So attached, you'll find a sheet. Please complete it, blah, blah, blah. I look forward to knowing all of you better, and I hope that we will foster long-lasting professional relationships. Please feel free to bring to my attention any problems or concerns you may have. Sincerely, Zoe Adina Emil, <laughs> Wendy Williams Intern Coordinator. Oh, you didn't want to put Queen of All Interns down there? The Queen word sounds too pompous. Okay. This is very professional, very nice. Look, she has down here. You have to fill out this stuff. Your school address, your home, your cell, your birthday. In case of emergencies, who do we contact? Career goals, any medical conditions we should be aware of? <gasps> Zoe is very sensitive to that because I, you know, I love the hot nuts. And Zoe would slink out of the room every time I'd have nuts. And I wouldn't even understand the correlation. <laughs> Turns out she wouldn't say anything. She's allergic to peanuts, peanut products, any peanuts in the air. Now, you know, this is the... A small room, but, you know, big enough that I would think the peanuts that I'm eating over here wouldn't affect you over there. But it apparently affected Zoe, and she never told me. So now we're going to have people's medical histories. Very nice. Will they have to take an AIDS test? <laughs> <laughs> well, though, we, don't, we don't sit behind. Oh, look at <laughs> Shaylin on the buttons. We don't sit behind other people's drinks and all like that. But it would be nice to know, Zoe, for instance, if somebody does have a prosthetic leg from the knee down, that would be the person that I wouldn't send over to oh, take a walk to get some hair. Yeah. Oh, I like the way you're doing things around here, Zoe. Where is Art? Is he on that website? Well, Super J just went to the Bigfoot website and says, Wendy, them feet on that website are awful. I went to the website that you mentioned, but I had to get off immediately. The feet were making me sick. All fat, ashy, stank looking feet. Who the hell thinks that ish is sexy? Art is really starting to frighten me. And about Victoria Gotti being 42, 42 and what street? Oh, wow. What does that mean? Like 63rd, 42 and 63 or something? Very funny. Who wants to go see The Friends and Lovers? It's a stage play based on e. Jerome, or Eric Jerome Dickey's novel. I like him. He's friend of the show. It's going to be at the Beacon Theater September 20th through 25th. And caller number 10 wins those passes right now. Asia's here straight out of Tufts University with not a goal in sight. <laughs> but she's finding herself and she's doing it here on the experience. Yeah, Asia, you know what? It's okay. You can get the calls right there if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to go in the other room. Wendy, I need your advice and guidance. My girlfriend recently tried to kiss me on the mouth after she gave me a professional. I'm not down with that. And it's not a double standard. When I've been down, I don't kiss her on the mouth afterwards either. This has just started a debate with our friends and coworkers. The women all are talking about intimacy and claiming it's okay. And men are all, and men all agree. Ew. Scope, please. What do you think, Wendy? Can I take a poll again? 
No, we're not taking a poll. The poll is, are women turned off to Martha men? 75% said yes, 25% said no. Now we're turning it around. Are men turned off to, and just, this is Art's word, he used it on the website, butch women. Doesn't mean lesbian. It means, you know, you can fix a tire, you can paint a house, you can fix the plumbing. Are you turned off to that? Um, All right, maybe we'll put this on here one day. Quite frankly, I think so much nasty uh, this is going on regarding germs and everything. But when you're in a zone, who thinks about it? I mean, it's, that's not a thing to me. It works. It works for me. It works. It works for me. I mean, you know. Martha Stewart's daughter, Alexis, is joining her on her Apprentice show. I love that they finally made up. You know, they were fighting like cats and dogs at one point. And I could never understand why Alexis rejected the family business like wholeheartedly. But then, you know, her mom uh, going through this whole jail thing has brought them back together. Much like Jennifer Aniston going through divorce now has brought her mother back together. Just like Yolanda King said about Coretta, though, sometimes, you know, um, you know, the, these seemingly tragic events, there, there's a purpose and a light that is supposed to be recognized by family and friends and close ones. And so no new word on Coretta Scott King other than that she's still in the hospital, but... Sanafa, Sanafa says, Wendy, one thing I enjoy almost as much as listening to you and your show daily is watching the Andy Mil- Milanowski show on MTV. Please don't let the fact that the guy is in his mid-20s turn you off. The show is hilarious, and I beg you to become a regular viewer. It's usually on MTV around 11 p.m. or later. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't know about the or later, but I'm going to start checking it out at 11 p.m. Because um, I can't, um, you know, they've taken Howard off at 11. It's not, you know, and I can't deal with the girls gone wild, which Howard has virtually become like. But, you know, out of obligation and habit, I go there every night at 11 o'clock anyway, Oni. I can't do it anymore. So if that's what time it comes on, I'm going to start checking it out. Wendy, the reason these functions with Tupac are happening in Stone Mountain, Georgia, is Stone Mountain was the place that the Klan controlled, marched and burned crosses across the United States during the U.S. apartheid era. Mm. Back in the day, if you were a Negro, you weren't to venture in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Well, I'd find nothing to prove by going there today. So if you all go to Stone Mountain to see anything going on there, let me know how it is, because I won't be going. I lived in a place called Stone Mountain, Georgia. A.K.A. Rivervale, New Jersey. <laughs> Holla. Shout out to Lewis. He says, thank God for the gangster hour. Now we can talk. Please shout out to Dwayne Reed staff in Masbeth, New York. Thank you. And no, I didn't catch the D-list over the weekend. But um, did you feel sorry for her on The Tonight Show? No, what happened? No, I got to catch it in reruns. On Martha Men. Wendy Artie is right. All men should be responsible to take care of themselves, whether they live alone or not. Good taste does not make you gay. I think the problem is that there are men that are just plain nasty. I almost, I once almost dated, went on a date with a man I worked with who made a mistake of stopping by, I made the mistake of stopping by his apartment, picking something up and actually let me see what it looks like inside. Please, the white porcelain toilet would look like subway dark. Br- yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Take my husband. Now, my husband is extremely masculine. You could never accuse him of being soft in any way. He knows the streets, but he also lives a lifestyle of culture and comfort, blah, 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 blah. It, it, you know, it, it's such a fine line. It's almost an unfortunate. I'm sorry I put the question out there because I don't want you all to think that that just because 75 percent of the women say, yeah, they're turned off by a Martha man. I hope that doesn't mean 75 because I'm turned off by a Martha man, but I don't want to walk into a black toilet seat. Mm-hmm. Who's the winner over there? Diane Williams. Where does she live? She lives in the Bronx. OK, so congratulations, Diane. Oh, She said Martha men rules because they bring the check home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they do what needs to be done. Okay, and they clean the home, too. All mm-hmm. right, Diane, congratulations. You're going to the play. Let's get back to this uh, monster uh, nurse. And I'm going to give you the telephone number in New York City. If you know this woman, uh, Noella Alec, and she's worked for you, because they say that she's worked for tons of people. 212-335-4317. Let me finish the story. So the Manhattan prosecutors believe, uh, first of all, she's being held on Rikers Island, and they believe that she's worked for about 12 families in New York City, Long Island, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania in the past five years. Only days before she allegedly abused this little girl, Sarah, she actually stopped working for the couple who had hired her to take care of uh, their twins out in Long Island. The parents um, of this little girl later discovered 
I guess through a lot of crying and whatnot, um, that she, that the girl had broken leg, broken collarbone. The monster nurse only confessed her potentially deadly actions after the doctors concluded that little Sarah, who had been lethargic and reluctant to eat, had been assaulted. Now, monster nurse faces 25 years in prison. And monster nurse says, one of the children fell asleep on my chest when I woke up. The child was on the floor. I picked her up and shook her to wake up to see if she was okay. Mm. In the meantime, the couple says that they interviewed about 20 candidates for nanny positions. And they liked this woman because, according to the newspaper, she appeared calm, organized, and experienced. And several former employers also gave her a glowing review. In the meantime, little Sarah is laying in a state where they're not, they don't know yet um, how this has affected her brain. She returned home on June 27th from the hospital. God. That's not one thing. I mean, once the kids get get to talking and stuff, like you want them to shut up, they ask so many questions. Mm-hmm. Most of them embarrassing, and they do it in public. On one hand, but on the other hand, now they can tell. Mm-hmm. Like my little scooter, now he can tell, and he'll tell. He'll tell on you. He'll tell on me. He'll tell on Mrs. Lopez. He'll tell on his teacher. He'll tell. He'll tell. But when he couldn't tell was when I just landed my job back here in New York. The kid was like nine months old, and I'm commuting back and forth. Or We were living at that time in South Jersey. An hour and a half the commute was. My biggest worry every day was, oh, is he okay? Because if he's not, and he did have a nanny, um, but, you know, you don't fully get comfortable. You know, she was new, too. I mean, we'd only known her for about six months. My parents lived with us for like three months. For me to get, you know, my mother's sea legs on and, you know, get to, you know, feeding and, you know, kind of get over my, you know, baby issues. And, and then they went back to Miami and my mother helped me. My mother and father helped me pick a nanny um, because I was at a loss for everything. I was just like, Ugh. I reverted back to being 15 for a moment there after I had the baby. Just like, oh, my gosh, all I want to do is have a party. You know, I want to I want to have my champagne. I want to go out to the club. I want to be thin, you know. You know, I, I I just, you know, I wasn't depressed. I just, in my own way, I guess I was acting out. My parents, they weren't all mad at me or anything. They just helped me through, and they didn't have a timetable on it. And when they saw that I was okay and I gave them the thumbs up, then they flew the coop. Then the girl started, like, a week before they left, so then it was all of us in the house, you know, until, until you know, then they left, and then the girl was there. Then I get the call. First, I get the itching that I'm ready to conquer a bigger career, and I got to come back to New York. And then I, you know, I get the job here and then I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, now this nanny thing, now we're an hour and a half away. We're not just around the corner, yada, yada, so on and so forth. But I'm so glad that he's like through those years. No, the first girl, she was a, she was a white girl. All right, just a moment. Thank God, though. You know, and shout out to everybody who's got good child care. Just when you get mad at them because they do one thing, you know, wrong. Like, they might not, you know. I mean, quite frankly, once a kid gets to be, you know, like five years old, it's not really a nanny so much as it is as an overall house person. And we have both, you know. We got Stella and then we have Mrs. Lopez. But, you know, quite frankly, got a video camera. if they do something wrong, but a million things right and your child is, is safe. I'm not talking about stealing. I'm talking about, you know, oops, broke, broke a little something. <sighs> That's a thing. That's not your child's arm. I've just learned to overlook all that. And it makes my life so much less stressful. No, nobody's going around the house breaking stuff and, you know, all like that. But I'll tell you what, when I came in the house and found my young Jeezy shirt shrunken from a size medium to a size small. <laughs> what? I only wore it one damn time, my frosty snowman, young Jeezy damn shirt. Why are you washing this in hot water? Why is it slightly like pink? You put it in with something red. And why is it now it only fits a five-year-old? But you know what? Sunny boy is fine, and he's happy and healthy. I'm going to chalk that up to the game and keep it moving. It's not a thing. But damn! All right, I have to go. Uh, I love you for listening today. Uh, 
plethora of stuff that I'm leaving on, on the desk. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, God willing, we'll all be back together. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, 2 to, uh, two to um, 7 p.m. Uh, growing up gaudy tonight, we'll talk again tomorrow. Vornia is up next with the Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Good night, my sweethearts. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh, man. And WBLS music starts now.